midnight candle waiting for your interview. Okay, our dear Undersecretary Justado M. San Antonio, our Superintendent Dr. Maria Magdalena M. Lim, our Assistant Schools Division Superintendents, uh, our SGO Chief and his staff, the officers and members of private schools or associations, school administrators and owners, DepEd Manila supervisors, the proponent and private schools focal person, Mrs. Ophelia Mampusti, and the technical working group of this project. Good morning. It is my honor to welcome you all to this mid-year assembly of private schools, administrators, and owners. It has been quite a time when we had a meeting like this, though virtual and use this opportunity to be updated on the latest happenings about the opening of classes, guidelines, and other things in this new normal. This will provide opportunity for the administrators to be clarified of issues, share experiences where everyone will learn from one another. And most especially, if the information comes from our esteemed leader from the central office, our USEC. In behalf of the Division of City Schools Manila, through the Curriculum Implementation Division, again, we welcome you all to this professional exercise of minds. Good morning. Thank you so much, Ma'am Ida, for the encouraging remarks. The Division of City Schools Manila has always been showered with young and devoted heads. This I am referring to is the new Assistant Schools Division Superintendent to give us the opening remarks. Friends, let's give Dr. Cynthia L. Eilis a big round of virtual applause. Thank you so much, Ma'am Elmita M. Sutingo, Principal of St. Dominic Montessori School, Tondo, VP for the Sun. To our DepEd Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction, Yusek Justado M. San Antonio. To our Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Maria Magdalena M. Lim. My co-ASTSS, Ma'am Melody Cruz, Sir Pedro Arau, and Attorney Antonio Casangkapan. Our Division Chiefs for Curriculum and Instruction, Ma'am Aida Rondilla. Our SGOD chief, Sir Virgilio Santos, Public School District Supervisor, Focal Person of Private School, Ma'am Ophelia A. Mampusti, Public School District Supervisors, Education Program Supervisors, to so our BP of Basic Education Department, Philippine Culture College President, Pampasa, Dr. Sining Marcos Cota, to the director, the school director, Arkham ES Cluster to School, Reverend Father Emilio A. Ascano. Administrators, directors, president, academic leaders, officers, members of private schools. Uh, 246 private schools in the basic education of the Division of City Schools Manila. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, God's great morning, everyone. In behalf of Manila, Dr. Maria Magdalena M. Lim, I formally open this activity today. Private schools administrators mid school year assembly with a theme, COVID is, which means where are we going? Private schools amidst new normal education. It has been four years that this Gabay program for private schools has started, which primarily aims for strategic direction. <laughs> this assembly was originally planned as PIR or Performance Implementation Review home planning in the calendar of our activities. However, due to normal situation, this is modified or termed General Assembly for us to accommodate LCP or learning continuity plan updates and other pressing needs and concerns. We know that we are all greatly affected by this pandemic. If we are already doing this activity for more than four years, now all the more 
that we need this amidst pandemic. I just would like to quote the statement of Judith Billings, superintendent of Washington State. She said, children are the priority, change is reality, and collaboration is the strategy. I believe that we have common goal. We have common priority, providing quality education to our children, youth, pupils, students, and that is children are a priority. And for change the reality, this pandemic is just one of the changes, though indeed different among others, which created a new normal. It has indeed surpassed all other great challenges which had happened before. Thus, we consider this as a crisis. But great thing about it is there is a strategy and that is collaboration. In collaboration, we add the expertise of everyone for us to divide a task and subtract the pressures, and at the end, we multiply our successes. I believe that we will all surpass this crisis with a theme, Kova this, where are we going? Let's go together. How? Let's plan together. Let's work together. Let's survive together. And let's succeed together. Thank you so much once again. That's great. Good well, morning, everyone. Keep safe, follow health protocol, pray more, and God bless everyone. That was so good of you, Dr. Cynthia Ailes. Getting now into the profundity of our session, please join me in welcoming the ever accommodating and smart down the line schools division superintendent, Dr. Maria Magdalena M. Liu. Ceso five for her message and introduction of the keynote speaker. Morning, everyone. Today is another milestone for both the Division of City Schools Manila and our private school partners to gather once again this year in this mid-year assembly. But what makes this event special is because we have with us a very important person who stands next to the Secretary of Education herself in rallying for the continuity of education in this pandemic time. And I couldn't believe that I get this opportunity to be the one introducing him. You see, I am a big fan of Yusek Dads. It started off when I heard him speak very humbly, but with full of wisdom, in Tagaytay City when we, he was then an ARD of Region 5. Hindi pa niya ako kilala noon. I was just an audience. Then in Palawan, as regional director of the same region, attending the National Mancom where we were the host. And I remember I got an email from him thanking us and sending a link to an article that I could use as reference in my work as ASDS or assistant superintendent back then. A chance encounter, but an unforgettable, unforgettable because I felt recognized of my minor task. Well, that is the characteristic of our guest. Very appreciative even of the little contributions of others and very approachable. Well, he is the, usually the one who is approaching you in any gathering. Siya pa yung I met him again when he was the regional director of Calabarzon in a consultative conference where I was one of the superintendents assigned in the group that he led in the deliberation of a certain topic during a small group discussion. That was when I learned more of him as a leader and the principles he believed in. He pushes for transparency, ethics, and accountability in school governance and even in uh, any levels of education hierarchy. 
He believes that a strong rewards and recognition system is an effective way to encourage officials and teachers to aim for excellence. He nurtures productive partnership with all educational stakeholders. He attempts to find ways of ensuring that every learner achieves authentic literacy. Furthermore, he strengthens a strong research culture towards meaningful innovations for learning. After all, he holds a research PhD in education from the University of Newcastle, Australia. Now, as USEC for Curriculum and Instruction, he has been tasked to coordinate the ongoing review of the K-12 curriculum. And in this historical experience of COVID-19 pandemic, he leads in the development of the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan that set a direction for all public and public private schools in the country in our current implementation of the distance learning. And here, here he is with us today now in our uh, virtual uh, assembly. And who would think na ang isang USEC ay pupunta sa isang division activity. Uh, wala pa akong natatanda ang USEC na naging guest sa at isang division endeavor. And this is the first time. Kaya maraming maraming salamat po, USEC Dad. Idol ko si USEC. <laughs> salamat at uh, pinagbigyan mo ang aming invitasyon na makasama ka at mak ma makausap ng aming mga private schools uh, administrators nang malinawan sila tungkol sa anumang mga concerns nila dito sa uh, distance learning. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with my a great pride, honor, and privilege to introduce to you the Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction at the Department of Education, Dr. Justado M. San Antonio. Maraming salamat, uh, SDS Mags. At uh, yeah, it's such a privilege uh, being also invited to be a part of this um, gathering of, uh, you know, the greatest um, private school uh, managers. Uh, we will always note that when we talk about the, cent the center of the whole country, it's always Manila kahit may iba nang dineclare na national capital. So, uh, maraming salamat for that very generous introduction. Um, I even forgot the, the first encounter. Indeed, nandun ka kasi sa audience. But that one in Palawan was so special to me. I really, uh, of course, kami po kasi sa DepEd, my greetings to the pillars of private education in, uh, uh, in Manila, DepEd Manila. And of course, thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Ophel, Ma'am Posti, for uh, the invitation. Um, sa DepEd po, pag may mga gathering kami, somebody is assigned to take care of you. And I was so touched with the highly personalized attention I got from the, the group of SDS mugs. And after that, ano na po kami, parang uh, hindi ko na talaga siya makalimutan because uh, that's that's just me. Ano, pwede makalimutan ko yung name ng iba or ng, but the, the face and the gesture is always there and treasured. And uh, of course, uh, dagdag lang po sa lahat, I really take pride in claiming that I literally rose from the ranks more than 35 years ago. Some of you perhaps were not yet born yet. Uh, uh, I joined DepEd as a secondary school teacher, uh, teaching tawag namin noon, uh, practical arts because I'm an industrial arts major. So it's, uh, I always grab the chance to um, have conversations with anyone. Uh, hindi lang po division activities. Actually, during the quarantine, I attended a lot of school-based in-service training activities uh, to, to take my part and uh, explain things. Uh, that are related to my work now as uh, USEC for curriculum and instruction. I'll make a confession. You know, one of my regrets, I, I, I think this is the first time I'm going to announce this, is my refusal to join DepEd NCR as regional director 
when uh, Director Almeda retired. Uh, that job was offered to me. Uh, and I said, no, I'm staying in DepEd Calabarzon because I felt that I had many things more to do. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, when I already felt I was ready for NCR, uh, Secretary Liling had other plans. Uh, yun po ang totoong nangyari. Ano, I, 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 I thought I needed more time to serve NCR. Uh, and uh, nung ready na ako, iba naman yung binigay ng, ng Lord. Ganyan po si Lord, masyadong mapagbiro. Uh, minsan yung mga gusto natin hindi nabibigay. And initially, akala mo na punish ka. But uh, well, <laughs> ganyan naman po ang buhay. Anyway po, so um, I, I, have, I was actually given uh, your concern. So unahin ko muna sila. You, you were suggesting that uh, uh, the DepEd uh, should allow the sharing of learning resources. Um, ako po, Fully supportive. Uh, hindi ko lang alam kung ano yung protocol, but uh, generally, if you inform us, we will give you access to the, especially the online ones. Uh, ang condition lang po is they should not be sold to the learners. And uh, ano, so we will uh, really uh, make it available, uh, especially those in our DevEd Commons and even in our LR portal. Okay po sa amin yan. The other suggestion is the, like the, flexible implementation of the guidelines. I wish to really um, apologize that up to the most recent one, uh, that ed policy issuances tend not to be very uh, like empowering uh, to the private schools. Um, Secretary Liling and I share the same belief that uh, everybody, even our own uh, local deaf ed officials down the line, should be given a lot more of authority because we are all professionals. So, ako po, uh, henceforth, after that, like uh, somebody, I don't know if it's in this meeting, uh, is some sister actually uh, called my attention during one uh, consultation meeting we had very recently saying, sinabi nyo, optional, but pinapa nyo sa regional office. So, henceforth po, pag nagsabi kami, optional, wala nang approval. Just inform the, the office, the regional offices, uh, of the version that you are implementing if you are not going to adopt what we are suggesting. It's because normally po, for the public schools, it's um, like it's uh, going to be implemented, but normally we would cite uh, private schools may do this on their own, provided, siguro hindi na provided, they submit their version of what it, whatever it is that we want to do. Uh, sub to be approved by the regional director. Ngayon po, sasabihin na natin, provided they submit uh, whatever it is they're doing uh, to the regional office para alam lang namin kung ano yung ginagawa. Of course, ito pong mga ganito, uh, I, I would also like to mention that uh, uh, honestly, may mga discussions ni po kasi kami, but uh, because there are also instances na pag ganitong masyadong um, malawak yung autonomy or yung um, yeah, yung autonomy ng mga tao, minsan yung hindi gaanong maingat ay hindi nakakapaghain ng magandang option sa mga learners. Pero sabi namin, wala naman yatang mga well-meaning private school officials and even DepEd principals and uh, supervisors who would design things that will not benefit the learners. So, ano po tayo doon? Uh, agree din po ako doon. Yung pong idea of expanding ESC and uh, especially to the elementary school, may ano na po yan, nasa discussion states na. I think we've already um, articulated uh, the need. Hindi po kasi yun sa strand ko ngayon, yung mga financial support sa private schools. Nasa ibang strand po siya, but I am in the TWG. But I remember during one hearing yata sa House of Representatives that has already been articulated by the Department of Education that perhaps it's high time we uh, expand the uh, education service contracting even to elementary schools or uh, the other ways of extending support. Yun lang pong other forms of support, we will always rely on what the legislators will authorize us. So I suggest that you also be more like uh, assertive or uh, more creative in uh, marshalling support from our legislators so that they can do the initiatives that will allow DepEd to have additional funds that can be utilized to uh, provide uh, extended support, financial support particularly, uh, to our private school partners and uh, collaborators. Uh, the other issue or suggestion is on for us to help you collect unpaid accounts. 
Uh, as you have perhaps known, I long served as a regional director more than six years in Calabarzon. And uh, we were very uh, like um, aggressive also in bridging the concerns of parents and uh, private schools, those that uh, whose children transferred to us with uh, like uh, unsettled financial accounts. I've met parents who are liars. I have met parents who would tell me uh, other things that uh, would tend to uh, put an ugly picture of some certain private schools. But uh, in the end, we insisted that when you decided to send a child to the private schools, you know that there's a financial obligation obligation and you cannot run away from such a financial obligation and the rules are clear that is one ground for withholding credentials so what we have been doing because we are also uh, expected to uh, extend uh, basic education services to anybody what we do and uh, i hope this is okay with you is yeah we allow continuous um, like temporary enrollment but we will never release the graduation credentials uh, when they graduate. Ang, ang ginagawa po natin, uh, there was one instance, ito another school somewhere, Quezon City yata, who moved to uh, a school in Lucena when I was RD, na malaki rin po yung ano, I facilitated uh, like the installment payment of uh, the financial. Sabi ko, ano yan? Like, you have three years uh, moving to us at grade uh, eight, uh, grade 10. O sabi ko sobra naman yan if, uh, ano, if over three years hindi mo pa yun masisettle uh, account mo. So siguro po, we'll have to be very uh, creative in making negotiations and I hope you will also allow uh, the parents who are really hard up uh, because otherwise they won't leave the private school system if they would still have the means. Uh, so ang pakiusap ko lang po, Especially in your area, very supportive naman po yan si SDS Max. And I know uh, Ma'am Offer is also very facilitative. Um, perhaps uh, in terms of like the uh, promissory note and you know, uh, let's just be very realistic. Hindi naman po kasi kung minsan nadadala sa gulatan yan. And then uh, yung pong frequent communication, uh, I actually share my number or my email address. So ako po, you can reach me uh, directly in my email, justlado.sanantonio at devn.org.ph uh, so that you can, I can get your like concerns if you are like having uh, like um, Issues with certain offices. I know in Dep and Manila that should not be a problem, but uh, perhaps somewhere else it could be a problem. You know, uh, Dep and officials are also, uh, you know, uh, unique and diverse in their uh, personal orientation. There are those of us who are really uh, trying very hard to be, sabi nga po ni SDS Mags, transparent, ethical, and accountable in the things that we do. Pero mayroon pa rin po kami mga a few na ak akala ng akala nila sa sarili nila sila yung <laughs> ari at reyna <laughs> na hindi pa po ito na uubos uh, pero parang endangered species na po na rin po yan but uh, so I will be happy to uh, to help you get through whatever it is uh, that will that's making it difficult for you at certain stages if that happens ano po. Kasi yan din po ang aking ano, in fact, sinishare ko rin yung number. So if you email me and if, if, like, if it's necessary that we, we talk, I can, I can give you my number after an email na lang po. Kasi parang mahirap na ngayon na ang dami-dami kong ka-text. Ka but uh, normally, sinishare ko rin po yung number uh, pang direct uh, ng mga nagsiserve ako when I, when I was hired. And then, um, so yun po yung mga concern nyo. But for today, let me also just share a few more things. I know you are all highly capable, but I'm I'm sharing already mentioned by um by SDS Mugs. Uh, I really pushed for and aggressively for T governance. Yung pong transparency, ethics, and accountability. Ang acronym namin yan sa T. Uh, and you know what? How T helps our body. <laughs> it helps us digest food. Pero gusto ko, gusto niyo naman po, eat okay lang, ethical, accountable, and transparent governance. It's not going to be a problem with me. But what I'm saying is, in that end, we try very hard to be very transparent, ethical, and accountable. In Calabarzon po, we have identified 12 things to be able to do this. Hindi ko na yata isi-share sa inyo yung acronym namin for the 12 things. But just 
to assure you that uh, wherever I go, I will try very hard to be very uh, transparent, ethical, and accountable. Let me also, also share my own ano po, ideal leader. Hindi pa po ako ito, pero uh, yan po ang para mga takeaways nila po for, uh, for today. Uh, for those of you who have heard me uh, share this, sorry, re review po ito. So my ideal leader is a prince. It's an acronym that represents six important words that, that to me would characterize uh, the leader that will produce the results that we expect. And when we say prince, the leader has to be very proactive. We don't, uh, the first letter is pro, being proactive po. So we don't wait for things to happen. We take the initiative. We always uh, uh, make sure that uh, we understand uh, the needs of our own organization so that we can uh, come up with initiatives and interventions that will um, yeah, make us realize our goals. The R is being results-oriented. If you are not clear about the results, if you don't know your goals, your objectives, uh, you will go nowhere. So uh, results orientation is very important for, for a leader. The I is being intelligent, and when I refer to intelligence, it's not high IQ. It's more of EQ, uh, emotional quotient, or um, actually, I'm asked, ano talagang intelligence yung kailangan para maging magisa ang leader? To me po, it, it's, it's the two things identified by Gardner, and being self-smart and being people smart. I feel that when a leader understands himself or herself, or when a leader has self-mastery, that leader tends to be uh, well-secured. Ang hirap po kasi magipagtrabaho sa insecure na leader na takot na takot na may dumating na mas gwapo sa kanya o mas magaling ay akala niya, papalitan na siya. Eh, diyan ka, nandiyan ka na nga eh. So, to me, uh, it's very important that we we understand ourselves. We, we know ourselves. We don't wear masks when we deal with people. Sa public school po, ang palagi kong example niyan, huwag naman palagi kang parang naglilihi, eh, ang tagal mo nang nagmenopause. Sorry po sa mga nagmenopause na, hindi eh, ko naman po binibilitan yung mga ganun. But <laughs> ano lang po yun, baka mabasya ko bigla at pati pala yung music, mali-mali rin yung ginagamit na the language. Anyway po, the other thing that I said about intelligence is being people smart. And when we are people smart, we understand that people are different. We don't expect uh, our members in the team to behave and think the way we do. We have to be very diverse because if everybody thinks and behaves in the same way, it will be very boring and we will not be very dynamic. So we have to respect one uh, each other Paborito ang example ko po, I'll, I'll share a very personal example. Huwag nila po ako i-chismis ang misis. Uh, my wife is, uh, ang paborito ko po kasi ginagamit in understanding people is the Enneagram. I think most of you have heard about Enneagram. Uh, that people, there are nine kinds of people around the world uh, with unique ways of doing things and unique um, triggers for certain action. Yung misis ko po is by nature an extreme warrior. So, warrior ng worry. So, at kahit ngayon po ay ganun pa rin. Oh, siguruhin mo na gan, hindi ka gaganyan, etc., etc. And sometimes, nung una, dahil hindi ko siya nauunawaan, na, napipikon po ako na, oh, pagtatawid ka ng kalsada, kailangan titingin ka ng kaliwa at kanan. Ay, sabi ko, ano na ako, regional director, I know how to cross the street. So, nagagalit ko. But I realized, nung na-discover ko na iba nga ang kanyang way of thinking sa akin, Instead na, na nag-aaway kami pag nagre-remind siya, ngayon ang sagot ko na hindi na, alam ko na yan. Ang sagot ko na ngayon, salamat sa pagmamahal. So mas ano po siya ngayon, mas masaya. What I'm saying is, when we understand the kind of people working with us, or in our surroundings, even in our own families, we are able to respond appropriately to the stimuli that they offer. And that brings us to like more harmonious relationships and happier times together instead of arguing and quarreling. Yun lang po ang point ko. So when you are people smart, you understand that not everybody will think and believe the way you do and you respect them. Siguro, yan po ang first assignment, if ever, magkailangan nyo pa yung assignment, is find out the kind of triggers that the people you work with actually have let them take the Enneagram and then you can 
deal with them in better ways. So yung kung N is network building. It cannot be overstated that no one is an island. We will never be effective in the work we do if we don't rely on others. So we have to expand and expand and expand the networks of friends and collaborators that we have so that we can uh, achieve our goals with ease. The most important sa akin dyan sa Prince uh, model kong yan is credibility. Original ko ito ni San Antonio. When I was doing my research on leadership, I had to synthesize all the traits mentioned by hundreds of authors on leadership and I came up with this six-letter acronym Prince. Po. And for net, uh, C for credibility. To me, yes, you can be proactive, you can be results-oriented, you can be intelligent, you can be a network builder. But if you don't have credibility, it will be very difficult for you to uh, influence others. Remember that the leaders should influence people to at least help us with the kind of things that we want to accomplish. And E is for empowerment. We have to also note that when we become a leader, our most important task is to develop our replacements. Wala pong hindi aalis sa mga posisyon natin. So if we want our organizations to be sustainable, we have to make sure that the next generation of successors are fully prepared. And you do that when you empower people. So last acronym na lang po, kasi baka mahaba ako. Riot. I'll invite you to join me in a riot, especially during this COVID-19 uh, times. Kailangan po may riot tayo sa buhay. Acronym din po ito that begins with a reminder that we should be very respectful. When where there is respect, we treat others as human beings worthy of uh, respect and they are dignified. Kahit po yan utility worker, kahit uh, ano dyan, mababang uri sa tingin ng iba. They also are human beings that should be valued. And ang palagi ko pong tinitingnan pag ako'y nagre-reflect sa sarili kong buhay, ang mga kaguluhan palaging nangyayari kahit sa personal relationships when you begin to believe na ikaw na lang ang magulo. So when we allow others, I mean value others, when we respect others, we believe that they are also worthy of sharing uh, beautiful ideas so that we can accomplish our goals. So pag hindi po natin uh, pag hindi tayo nagre-respeto, pakiramdam natin tayo lang ang magaling, tayo lang ang maruno. Hindi po maganda yung gano'n. Para sa akin po ito, I'm sharing a riot that I use in my own life. The I is being very clear about our intentions. And when we behave, we should really be very intentional. Minsan po, eh, dinadramatize ko pa yung galit ko. Nagagalit din po ako. Maka po, sa inyo naniniwala na ako ay palagi lang napasmile. Marunong din po akong magalit. But sometimes I dramatize to highlight a point. What I'm saying is, our intention has to be really clear. It has to be about uh, making our schools, transforming our schools or our own organizations into schools that deliver. And the O in the, the riot is being optimistic. That with every effort, we will move closer to our goals. Yung pong growth mentality or growth mindset is very important. Kasi po, uh, alam naman natin ito lahat, di ba, na kahit sa mga estudyante, if we make, don't make them believe that the effort counts, they will just withhold efforts and they will refuse to actually achieve higher than they are capable of. So sa akin po, optimism is very important. The growth mindset is also uh, very uh, similar to being optimistic, that believing that uh, the effort that we exert will always be rewarded with uh, like results that matter to us. And finally, the T, hindi po siya transparency sa riot ko. Sa riot ko yung T is about trusting people. I, I, while it's very difficult to like undo whatever it is that we have in our own personal uh, uh, set of principles now. But I would, ako po personally, I believe that people should be trusted until they show uh, and prove that they are not worthy of our trust. Kahit po chinismis na sa akin, pagbago akong dumating sa office, na wag kang magtiwala dyan, I will still give that person a second chance. So, sana po, uh, yun na yun, I am ready for the questions now. Please uh, consider, uh, 
Or gusto niyo kung prince, masyadong masculine, pwede niyo na mong gawing, gawing babae, uh, gagdagan niyo ng strategic, gawin niyo gawin niyo sexy. So princess pa rin po 'yan, the, the, the root word is prince. Sabi ko nga po, that that is copyrighted akin talaga po 'yan. So you're allowed to share that but uh, you, you should mention that it comes from Antonio. <laughs> prince po is uh, proactive, results oriented, intelligent, network building, credible and empowering is the kind of leader I hope I would be. Hindi pa po ako ganyan. That's also my ideal. And for us to survive, we should create riots in our own lives, in our own families, in our own organizations by respecting, by being very clear about our intention, by being optimistic and trusting. Maraming salamat po. Uh, God bless. Thank you so much, USEC, Sir Diosdado M. San Antonio. Dream came true for us Manila School Administrators to meet you even virtually. More, or much more listen to your words. Through you and the learning continuity plan you tirelessly advocate, we are led to a clearer direction despite pandemic. Our cool guy on a hot seat while being interviewed on TV. Your grace under pressure is admirable. You said, would you please spare us a little time to accommodate some questions? Here to moderate the question and answer session, we give you a friendly and accommodating Dr. Philip R. Valdera, Public Schools District Supervisor, DepEd Manila. Magandang umaga po, uh, the Undersecretary Diosdado M. San Antonio. My former regional director, when I was still work, uh, when, when I worked at the regional office of Calabars. Uh, yung lahat po, I, I, I hope I would not violate something, no? Kung magdadagdag ako. Lahat po nung sinabi ni Sir, naranasan ko yun eh. Yung key governance, yung advocacy niya. So yung transparent, ethical, and accountable leadership. Si Sir Dads, at 4 o'clock, at 5 o'clock after office hour, you would not see him using... Uh, uh, government service. Makikita po ninyo sa Sir Dad sa kainta, naka-shorts, nakasabit sa jeep minsan, papunta sa kanyang mga anak sa UP. <laughs> At 5 o'clock, hindi niya po gagamitin yung service ng region. Ganun po si Sir. At as much as possible, when we visit division offices, as much as possible, nagdadala kami ng sarili naming kape. Kasi ayaw ni Sir na pagdating namin sa mga division at sa mga schools ay uh, nag-aabala yung mga school heads nang ipapakain sa amin o ipaghahanda. So, yun yung mga bilin ni Sir. Okay. Sir, I miss you. Good morning po. Uh, for our questions... Morning, uh, Philip. Dinismiss mo pa ako, ha? <laughs> <laughs> Ayaw din ni Sir na pag may training kami, si Sir Dads kasama namin pumipila ng mga participants kapag kakakain. Ayaw niya nung sinaservan sa table. So kung saan siya umabot sa pila, sa dulo, doon si Sir tatayo at pipila. Ganun po si Sir. Okay, so to start with, kindly write your question para basahin ko para kay Sir Dads. School heads ng private schools, may mga concerns po ba kayo and questions? Ah, uh, Sir, this is from Sirring... Ah, may we know how eventually will DepEd enhance the assessment scheme in online education? Is there an official scheme on the components of the academic grade? Philippine Cultural College po. May uh, yung, last, uh, yung last part, hindi ko nakuha yung last part ng tanong. Is there an official scheme on the components of the academic grade? Ang nilabas nating guideline, ang, although this one is for public schools primarily, uh, pwede niyong hindi i-implement, yung inalis natin yung periodical exams. But I understand in the private schools, importante yon. So okay naman sa amin na i-ano nyo yun. Essentially po, yung dating mga components, yung sa DepEd adjusted uh, as a, uh, parang basis for the grades, ang inalis lang po namin yung periodical test at inihati yung weight nito sa written outputs and uh, performance tasks. 
And uh, so, ano rin po, kayo rin po ang magdi-decide kung anong tingin nyo ang maganda. Ang sinasuggest ko po as, uh, ano, is um, rely more on portfolio. And hopefully, since ang, ang mag, mas mainam nga po ang sa private schools because I, I would expect that a lot more of you are implementing online. Ano, may option kayo for online. So, you can make the teachers do a conversation with the uh, with the learners um, for them to be able to explain their uh, outputs, their portfolios. And the teachers will be able to determine whether indeed the children have uh, prepared the outputs or it's someone else. Isang issue kasi yan na, na ang sagot ko dyan, although hindi yata magandang pakinggan, sabi ko, kung ang parent na ang magbibigay ng output sa ang gagawa, di tinuruan niya na ang batang magiging dishonest. So, wag nang magreklamo ang parent kung maraming dishonest sa sa bansang Pilipina. So, uh, this is, sabi ko nga, an opportunity for the, the parents themselves and the homes to also teach the right values kasi wala na ngayon sasabihin. Di ba po, nung ako ay, when I was principal, ang daming batang uh, violators ng rules pag kinausap mo yung magulang, sasabihin, ah, mabait po yung anak ko is the influence of the friend. Eh ngayon, bahay na lang. So, uh, makakabuelo yung parent to really mold their own children. Um, according to their uh, prioritized values. So, ang sinasabi po natin, yung assessment uh, will be, uh, again, kayo ang bahalang mag-decide, but ako personally, I think a very good component should be yung portfolio. Uh, may follow-up question po siya, uh, Yusek. Is there an honor roll to be published? Um, kami, we understand na nag-decide na kayo kasi tapos na halos yung first quarter niyo. Yung ilalabas namin sa DepEd, uh, parang ay, hindi pa kasi siya final but uh, as of now, ang agreement namin, wala kaming honors sa mga hindi graduating. So most likely, yung grade 6 at uh, grade 12 lang ang uh, papayagan namin may honors and then yung iba, uh, wag na lang muna. Uh, bakit mayroon po tayo dito sa mga grade 6 at grade 12? Kasi baka gagamitin nila for scholarships sa uh, admission sa next level. And bawa yung grade 6 going to high school and then po yung uh, senior high school graduates uh, going to the universities. Baka factor yung pagiging honor graduate sa mga scholarships. So we are considering the idea of having honor students dun po sa dalawang level na yun. But for the rest, wag na lang muna. Uh, yun another... po yung amin. Yun po, pag lumabas po yun, ang statement doon, private schools are encouraged to implement this. But uh, again, all they do is inform the regions. Kasi nga po, it may no longer be uh, correct if you just change. Kung nag-declare na kayo ng honor sa first quarter sa grade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ituloy-tuloy nyo na po yun. By the way, this is the, the kind of uh, mindset po that I really have. I will, I'm, I'm very averse to uh, prescriptions. Hindi po ako bagay sa policy work kasi ang feeling ko... Uh, yeah, people should really be uh, allowed to take the initiative and be treated as professionals. Ang di po ba naman, when you are a professional, you should know how to address the challenges in your needs. Otherwise, nakakahiya ka professional kung hindi mo alam. Mag-aantay ka ng lahat ng gagawin from somebody else. Pakimute. Unmute mo, Philip. Okay, sir. Uh, Yusek, what is the possibility of having face-to-face -face classes for junior high school? Um, you know, it's a presidential pronouncement na walang face-to-face. -face. So, uh, and there's a snowballing call for uh, us to consider uh, the idea of doing limited face-to-face. -face. So, the secretary will hopefully uh, very soon make the presentation to the president of the the plans of the Department of Education in terms of implementing this. So let's just watch out for uh, like latest pronouncements, but be assured that the Secretary and the Department of Education will, will make a presentation and uh, will clarify the proposals. We're still like putting together our proposals as strand namin. So we're, we're developing the 
the the whole strategy uh, coming from different strands kasi kami po teaching and learning yung sa administration yung mga requirements sa classrooms safety security etc and then mga teacher requirements so all this will be ano but ang tingin po ako po personally again the optimist in me tells me na baka papayagan naman tayo especially in areas where the uh, covid-19 virus the risk is very low you said from Dr. Sarte. Thank you, Sir San Antonio. How about the components for the honor students? Do we still follow the criteria? Um, what we've been doing sa honors natin, di ba? Uh, sa akin kasi ang isang nakita ko na nawalan tayo ng maraming sakit ulo when we adopted the existing mechanism in DepEd na you just reach a certain average walang valedictorian, walang salutatorian. So wala na ngayon mga kasuhan about who should be the valedictorian. Kasi if you reach that that uh, threshold and you meet the requirements, you are declared with highest honors, with high honors, with honors. So I, I really got so excited. This was, of course, an intervention from the DepEd a long time ago, which I welcome so much. And I noted that this has uh, given us relief from a lot of headaches during graduation time. So I don't know with you, but that's what I think. Sir, we got one more question here from Ma'am Merlina Bagiwang. Uh, sir, good morning. I am caught up with a situation where owners or administrators' lack of support hampers the implementation of programs. What is the best strategy to convince them since they are not really educators? Thank you. Um, Maganda yun, maganda yung challenge. Ano. Uh, I think what you do is come up with a very extensive, uh, sa amin sa DepEd, complete staff work. When you want your boss to uh, believe the way you do, uh, prepare a complete staff work. Uh, come up with a very good rationalization, uh, rational for, for your idea. And then perhaps, uh, alam ko naman siyempre sa private schools kasama yung financial like the profit thing or the efficiency of the operation being enhanced. So demonstrate how it actually addresses the, 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 the more important uh, things that the owners would consider. And then be very com complete with your proposal and then provide options. Like I, if we don't do this, this is what is going to happen. If we if try this out, this is the, these are the possible consequences. So if these things are very clear uh, in that uh, like document that you will prepare a proposal or however you will call it, I think it, at least the owners will take a second look another look at your idea. Rather than just discussing it in a meeting, uh, I would suggest you immediately, you, you come up with a concrete document in black and white and then call, like, call for a meeting once that is ready or you can send it ahead and then uh, ask them if they are willing to listen to you, explain more uh, in a meeting uh, para, ano, para naman ma maunawaan nila yung mga gusto mong gawin. Good luck! You said, may follow-up question po si Raymond Endriga, si Sir Raymond, sa honor roll, regarding sa honor rolls. Will there be changes in the honors and award system given the varying modes of learning implementation? Yun na nga, ang I already mentioned na uh, we are inclined to say, but this is primarily for the public schools, which the private schools may also adapt. Sabi ko nga, bahala na po kayo. But sa amin, ang thinking namin, nag-meeting na po kami with the directors in the CI strand, uh, we feel that it's only in grade 12 and grade 6 where honor, honor students should be uh, declared using the old uh, policy. And then for the uh, those, those grade 11 and grade 9 to 7 and uh, grade 5 to, from K, ay wala na muna pong recognition ngayon for uh, exemplary performance. Uh, Yusek from teacher Lucy, sabi niya, is it possible for the government to also give assistance to private schools? As of this school year, we are blessed enough to have less than one third of our previous enrollments due transfer of our students to public schools, some due to family difficulties, due to the effect of the pandemic, others transferred due to the 
due to public school assistance to the students, schools, and teachers? The um, possibility is always there, but it's beyond DepEd's authority. So I, I suggest, as I've said, that perhaps you can also talk to your congressman and low, uh, I mean, and inform them about the, the idea because uh, it's really uh, the, the legislators that talk, that discuss the budget, priorities, etc. We can only propose, but in the end, we cannot do things outside of the General Appropriations Act or whatever law uh, that is being enacted. Uh, so fortunately, yata yung recent Bayanihan version will have uh, something for the affected uh, teachers in private schools. But that is just for that one. But if you're referring to other forms of support, uh, those are to be legislated. And uh, sabi ko nga kanina, we are expand hopefully we are supportive of the idea of expanding the education service contracting. We are also reviewing the teachers subsidy uh, for uh, those assigned in schools implementing the EESC kasi feeling po natin hindi naman na uh, sufficient sa mga things like this but again these are all subject to uh, what the legislators will tell us to do Sir, from ACLC USEC meron po siyang tanong would there be a possibility if we will be shifted to MGCQ on January to deliver blended learning or limited face to face um, yeah, the possibility is uh, always there, pero sabi ko nga, that is subject to the decision of the President of the Philippines. But be assured, let me just reiterate that the Department of Education is putting together the concrete proposal of relative to the implementation of limited face-to-face. -face. We are proposing, we are, we are now in the process of finalizing the, the proposals that we will offer uh, when the secretary discusses the matter with during a cabinet meeting. Uh, follow up question, sir, from Rodrigo Litao. Can DepEd help private schools in making tie up with industry, particularly in the time of pandemic? Ano naman? So, I think that's very possible. All you do, hindi ko alam po kailangan duma ang sa central office, but uh, I feel that. Perhaps through the division offices or the regional offices that can be done. Let us know if there's a need for like a central initiative uh, to be uh, done so that it applies to the whole country. But on a case-to-case -case basis, you can actually uh, collaborate uh, through the, the division office or the regional office. Now, please unmute Philip. Nakamute ka? Sorry, Yusek. <laughs> okay lang po ba, sir? Last three questions because we understand you are very busy and you have other meetings. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, from Ging Segovia, if face-to-face -face will be allowed, what can be done to students whose parents do not want to send their child to the campus due to their worry of their kid contacting the virus? In this, ilagay niya sila sa distance learning. I, I mean, the beauty of this COVID-19 uh, uh, emergency, it has somehow uh, opened the eyes of everyone to the possibilities of blended uh, home-based learning, etc. So, gawin na lang po natin flexible yung offerings para uh, yung lahat ng may mga agam-agam ay sige, sa bahay lang kayo. Yung mga ayaw naman ng ganun ay na sa school. Kung pwede, makayagan na sila sa, sa school. Uh, Yusek, from Santa Catalina College po, sabi niya, what is the DepEd's plan for next year in case the COVID-19 still in our country to vaccine, uh, maybe sa, ibig niya siguro sabihin due to vaccine, yung availability ng vaccine? Ang, um, ang um, ano natin, we will continue to monitor and uh, make adjustments accordingly. I mean, monitor the way uh, uh, our strategy is being implemented now, and then we will be adjusting, uh, making adjustments. But what I'm saying is perhaps kung wala pa talagang pagbabago, essentially, ano pa rin, blended or home-based learning, 
and then uh, mga, may mga reconfiguration. Just like what we did with our first quarter nung na-monitor po namin. And ito po yung pakiusap sa akin yesterday when I was interviewed. Sana daw pati private school mag-readjust din ng mga requirements because talaga pong yung common complaint of the parents and the learners is mukhang overwhelming yung mga pinapagawa natin sa mga bata. So, ang ginawa po namin sa DepEd, nag-issue kami na fostering academic ease. We, we, we made, like, we allow the teachers to make adjustments on the requirements na yung mga ibang sobra-sobra para na lang sa mga past learners. Pero yung general group of learners are given lesser ano and we were not, I, we also encourage the schools not to be very strict with the submissions kasi nga the learners uh, do things in different ways so baka yung pace ng iba hindi naman masyadong mabilis so we 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 did that and the other thing that we did na uh, hindi ko po alam kung pwede nyo ring gawin ay we made adjustments on the quarters ginawa namin medyo mahaba ang first quarter para mas space ng maayos at so hopefully sa last three quarters, uh, pwede nang mag-cope ng mas mabilis. You say class na po ito siguro. Okay, so from Ma'am um, Mar- um, Melita Magmumbol, sabi niya po, do we have to wait for Nat and Enkai in this time of pandemic? Ano yun? Ang concern niya po, Yusek, is do we have to wait for the uh, National Achievement Test and Enkai in the time of pandemic? We're actually exploring how this could be done uh, remotely. So, uh, hindi pa po final yung decision, but uh, we're in the process of, uh, of uh, discussing how we should proceed with the assessment, national assessment. Kasi po, gusto naman natin may national assessment pa rin kahit may pandemic, pero uh, how to do it um, uh, with reliability, with uh, uh, like uh, making sure that it's uh, really valid, reliable, uh, will be uh, ano, is a challenge that uh, ne- uh, our Bea is actually exploring right now. Thank you very much, sir. Dear school heads, we, ca- we cannot accommodate all of your questions because we all understand si Yusek ay marami po siya. Sige. So, i- i- ilagay ko dito sa chat box yung email address ko. So, yung kung may mga tanong pa, you can ask me questions through the email na lang. Pag hindi ko po kaya, I will request the region, the the directors to answer uh, on my behalf. Kahit so hat- I'm typing now. Kahit hating gabi yan sa Sir Dad, sumasagot sa Q&A. Mas na ako using. Sir, thank you. Ibabalik ko na po sa, ano, sa MC. Maraming maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Philip. Ikaw ha, iniwan mo kami sa Calabarzon. Mag-iingat po kayo lagi, Sir. Mag-iingat <laughs> po kayo lagi. Lagi ko pong tinatandaan lahat ng turo at lahat ng natutunan ko po sa inyo. Nakita ko po kayo, umaten kayo ng ano, professional meeting kay Carl sa Quezon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, sige po, Sir. Thank you. Ingat po. May I come in? Before we turn over the microphone to the MC, let me say something. You said thank you so much. So <laughs> that was Welcome. really cool of you. <laughs> napaka napaka cool niyo po talaga. Napaka accommodating. Ah, uh, totoo po yon. Fans niyo ang mga private schools when we started with our LCP with Ma'am Lim, giving technical assistance with Ma'am Aida uh, during our beginning of school year assembly, June three. Your PowerPoint presentations, all your PowerPoint presentations have been uploaded in the FB group of private schools. So they know you already. And they're saying, sana makita namin si, si Yusek Dads, nakikita namin sa TV, ginigisa, or <laughs> ginigisa sa TV. But you're so cool. <laughs> so, uh, thank you so much. Alam namin, words are not enough to say thank you to you. And in behalf of Ma'am, our superintendent, Ma'am Lynn, we would like to give you our virtual thank you through the certificate that we can offer. And AJ, kindly post or rather flash the certificate of appreciation, recognition to USEC. USEC, hope you, you stay safe and healthy all the time. Marami pa, your okay. blessing to us. Ako, hindi ko and thank you too. <laughs> and, and for those who may wish to pray for DepEd, this afternoon our budget will be deliberated on at the Senate. So we are asking for people to pray for the DepEd budget to, ah, yes, to yes. get approved by our senators. <laughs> Opo. Opo nga. We will always pray for you. We will include you in our prayers. Thank and you. The, organiz- 
the organizations coming from different uh, parts of the Philippines, they are talagang they're eager to see you, to 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 listen to you, talk to us like this because they they feel that we belong. Actually, in the chat box, they're saying, "Pwede po ba lagi kami kasama sa mga memo, etc." Which we know you already have included private schools there. That rule of thumb, be po ba that they have the leeway to to improve or to modify according to their vision mission. But the minimum uh, minimum requirements of that uh, should not be compromised. Di po ba? Yun yung ano natin. Yeah. And so with this, may I read a citation for the Division of Manila for Ma'am Lim and the rest of our ASDSS. Uh, Division City Schools of Manila awards the Certificate of Recognition to USEC Diosdado M. San Antonio for sharing his precious time his expertise and valuable insights and all other things during the private school's mid-year, mid-school year assembly with the theme, Who Vadis Private Schools Amidst New Normal Education, held on November 19, 2020. Given this 19th day of November 2020 at Manila Education Center, Antonio J. Villega Street, Ermita, Manila, virtual a virtual certificate for you, Yusek, and we will visit you one time to give you this, the hard copy of this. Thank you so much. Thank you for the advice. You know, you're always there for, for all of us, public and private schools. Mabuhay po kayo. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye po. Good luck and God bless. Uh -huh. Apo. Uh, LA is happy also. They church here. <laughs> Hello, Miss LA. <laughs> FEU. I think F EU people are here also. Have joined yeah, us. Yeah, regards to Miss LA. Aha, sige pa. Thank you. See you, Sek. You're very compendious, all embracing, all inclusive exchange of ideas. Thank you, Dr. Philip, for patiently managing concerns, questions, and queries. Words are not enough to express our appreciation. Goodbye for now, you, Sek. Shall we meet you again, hopefully after pandemic? We also would like to thank SDO Manila Management Team and the Program Technical Working Group for bringing us into this virtual meeting room for another substantial learning. Mabuhay po ang DepEd. To sustain and completely fill this event with information, focus, and directives, may we call again our very own Ma'am Ophelia, Ma'am Pusti, for the other updates and bits of salient information. Ma'am Ophelia. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we proceed to our business proper for the updates, concerns, reminders, and our LCP uh, addendum of requirements for a checklist, then we might as well recognize here, para makita nyo ng lahat, our, of course, the management team, you already have seen them on screen. This time, our supervisors, the technical working group first, please show your beautiful faces here. As I call your name, Dr. Lorna Candelario. Dr. Lorna, we are following this program for the sequencing of your appearing on screen. Dr. Lorna Candelario and Dr. Adolfo Amit for program and invitation. Private schools district supervisors po sila. And ito pa po o sila? Yan. On screen. Okay. Then we have, parang hindi ko nakikita. Ayan, sina sir. Then, Fe Bele, Ma'am Fe Bele. Okay, Sir Amit. For program and invitation. Yeah. Fe Bele and Ma'am Lolita Rabago for certificates for guests and participants. Sensor. By the way, uh, talking really? about certificates. Yes. Talking about certificates for participants, you will get it automatically after you have submitted online evaluation later. Automatic e-copy of your certificate will be given after you have uh, submitted your online evaluation. So there you are. Then we have Dr. Chofilo Norombaba and Dr. Reynaldo Pineda Jr. For the evaluation, that's later. There you are. Sir, patanggal po ng Christmas. <laughs> Talagang pinatanggal, ha? 
Yan, sila yan. Lagi nyo silang nakikita. Yan, Sir Rain, a uh, new baby from si, si ID this oh, school year lang ano, Sir Rain or oh, last year, November. Then next, you know her very well. I used to be with her, she used to be with me. Ma'am Ayla B. Urea. Ayla. Next to her will be Ma'am Victoria Santos. They're in charge of documentation, taking pictures, snapshots, etc., and the narratives afterwards. Okay, thank you. And of course, Dr. Philip Baldera. And you don't forget, siya po yung man of the hour. Albert James Makaraeg, simply call him AJ. So yung mga nakapasok at hindi nakapasok, it's because of AJ Makaraeg. Ah, hello. Actually, they are the for texting, they cannot, <laughs> they cannot, they cannot, they cannot join. Sa likod, sa likod. <laughs> so yan, they cannot join. Maybe their internet connection is very poor. And our district supervisors, nandyan po kayo lahat. Makikita naman on screen yung inyong mga pangalan. Pagka nag-show kayo ng, when you show your face, and po, so that you know them, they're the ones evaluating, patiently evaluating your learning continuity plan, your class schedule, school calendar, SF something. So if you fail to submit, they will make a follow-up. We will make a follow-up. So, yan po yung mga supervisors. We also have education program supervisors. This is, this is equivalent of our subject area division coordinator. So, for every subject area, there is. So, I don't know if they're here, Dr. Soriano and the others. Uh, ALS coordinator. We usually go to the office of uh, ALS coordinator at P. Gomez and the ALS educational program supervisors. Who else did I miss in the management team? So, so far they are. Uh, and I can see now the face of uh, our FAMSA president. So, uh, with that, we close this, we close this part one, and we move to part two. We also thank, would like to thank our assistant superintendents, uh, the chiefs who joined us, because I know they will be out for a while, come back later, towards the end, because they have a meeting to attend to. And all the guests from uh, Samar, Luz Vinin, thank you so much. See you next time because we will proceed to our agenda or our business proper for Manila private schools now. So the meeting is now open. So my, may I present to you what the status quo is, is really where are we going? Remember, we started during the, our beginning of school year assembly. In Gabay, we have our direction this year, CLAP. CLAP, which means... Continuous learning amidst pandemic. C is for curriculum. A is for agencies. P, uh, P is for P is for partners. Ano pa? Uh, L L is for learning learners. So we're asking then uh, continuity of learning of children. And now where are we as a school? At NTT na natin yon. As I've said earlier, before the start of the program. Through the quick survey, we're able to see the state of private schools in Manila. And that, uh, I say, I've said, I have submitted to USEC for a little a reference for him. For the PowerPoint presentation, he, he did not present anymore because he presented them to you last time uh, with Mam Lim, with Mam Aida during the beginning of school year assembly. And I even posted this in our FB page, in your FB page. So please go over it. That was in June. The Merks, uh, that's the one that I will be posting here. That's very, very uh, informational, educational for you to see how was the Merks came to be? How were they chosen? What was the process followed? It's not just putting everything there. And please, let's remove the notion that minimum learning competencies before were scratched or removed. No. There's nothing removed. Only they're clustered, they're classified, they're um, 
group together and rewarded. Walang naalis, walang nabawas, nireward lang po siya. So, hindi tinanggal, kundi inayos at, at uh, mas, mas inayos. So, there you go. Uh, there you are. For the next slide. These are our topics for this afternoon. Very short. Anyway, it's 10 o'clock. We still have time after this. Number one is status of compliance and schools readiness of your learning continuity plan and other requirements. As I've told you, there are assigned uh, supervisors, PSDSS, to check and monitor and TA, technical assist you when it comes to completing your LCP. And then, uh, status of school application for DepEd, we'll have that later. Enrollment update, plans and upcoming activities for 2021. Issues and concerns, plans and activities came from you during the beginning of the school year assembly and from the everyday business or concerns and the problems we have received in the office, those are included in our plans to be addressed this, for this coming calendar year 2021. And as we said, this is, as Ma'am Ayla said, this is the last for goodbye this calendar year. This is supposed to be our um, project implementation review, which we've been doing since 2016. And after the review, we're coming up with our plans for next school year, side by side yan. So, eto na tayo ngayon. Next slide, we'll give you there. Out of 264 private schools listed, 235 schools complied, though not completely because there is addendum with the requirements, LCP requirements, health protocol, class schedule, with a screening time there. Well, for those who are asking, you don't follow in total the screening time given by DepEd. You have your leeway. Our intention, the only purpose is that we have to keep in mind or to remember is we don't strain the children's eye or that is for the health of the learner. So pag na, na, when we avoid that and we see to it that we have breaks, then if the, it is supposed to be three in our screen time advice, uh, advice then you can have a little longer. Especially now that you have started classes when this, when this memo came or was posted. So it's very difficult, especially for our parents, for us to shorten the screening time. Knowing private schools, they would ask, short change kami kasi bakit binawasan yung oras? Dapat nga eight hours. You know, they can tell that. Baliktad de. Those are the concerns of the parents for as a private schools, especially our Filipino-Chinese schools. Gusto ng mga parents natin, aral talaga ng aral. Anyway, children are exposed to, to screen almost a day daw. So why not take this study? But just the same, for the safety of our learners, we manage our time. But not every day. Every day exposure for them. We have our online, we have synchronized and asynchronized learning modalities. Okay? Uh, third batch is yan, we're able to give it to, to NCR. We're, we're able to endorse to NCR. Though there are some to be modified, some to be corrected. Hard copies were given. But this time, after our meeting, when you submit, you need to submit to the office here at the Vision Office, both the hard copy and the soft copy. The soft copy will be the one to be endorsed to DepEd, to be forwarded. And our checklist of evaluation. The hard copy will stay in our office. So, yan ha, yan ang pagkakaiba ngayon. Soft copy. Mahaba yan mamaya. So, yan, the next slide will give us, yan. If you're asking, why is it? We already have submitted. We have complete, uh, completed all this. Why we need to submit? It's because the first that we submitted, we only use the division checklist. Meaning, this came after we already have submitted. Congratulations. You are one. Manila was one of the first to submit 
continuity plan to the to the to MCR. So yun tayo. Pero kung submit pa rin tayo with this uh, compliance of this addendum. So especially like for example, um, Cardinal Sin Learning Center, Adamson, FEU, UST, and all others, Mapua who have completed all this, I saw in their in their hard copies, they have all uh, what it takes to be included in the addendum. You still have to submit because you don't have copy A anymore. Please resubmit. Ito yun. Mamaya bibigay namin yung checklist. Next, please. And the next slide. There. This is just the regional memorandum. That's the regional memorandum stating that December 29 will be the deadline for submission of LCP. There you are. I cannot show you the updated status kasi napakahaba niya. Naka-Excel. Just the summary. Uh, 66 schools for 77 programs have been processed and issued for me to operate for school year 2020-2021. Kulang ng zero. There you are. And I think almost of you have received already your certificate or permit. And the next slide. There. Talking about permit, permit to operate schools, the others, this is not their problem. But for the 66 schools processing their permit, please rem be re reminded of our deadline for submission because we're very strict when it comes to deadline. And CR is very strict when it comes to deadline. Deadline is deadline in all this. So a failure to submit, then you have to go through uh, a different process. Mas mahaba. Uh, with the legal uh, section that you have to ask for, mas mahaba po. So why submit early on? If you notice, there is a column for SDO Manila deadline. That is SDO Manila deadline. The official deadline in the Department Order 88 Series 2010 of the Private Schools Manual is official in the third column. SDO Manila is our uh, local deadline for Manila. Why? It takes time to evaluate your documents. And the supervisors have uh, there are a lot of time for that because we have other responsibilities. We have other responsibilities. So we schedule evaluating your documents. So we need one month at least for the deficiencies. We need one month to, to, to follow up, to give technical assistance to you. And before the deadline in NCR, then we can submit complete, complete requirements already. So far, congratulations, Manila. Uh, in five-year time, there's none of the endorsed by the division that was returned to us for deficiency or disapproval. Dito pa lang po, nadi-disapprove na o hindi na natin ini-endorse yung, yung mga hindi kayang i-endorse. Like in 2016, I think 70 or more than 70 small schools were not endorsed for permit. And uh, 100 plus were endorsed for permit. So for new permit, July 30 for Manila, August 34, MCR. Renewal, December 27, the last uh, office day in the division office. And first week in January for NCR, first day of process. Recognition, January 15 for our division, February 15 for the NCR. We're using the same GPR forms. For new permit, there is one. Renewal, there is another. Recognition, there is another. We also have our form for senior high school. Even when you are integrating your schools or merging your schools, we have another form. There are different forms. Or renaming the schools, there, are another, there is another checklist. What else? Closing the school, there are requirements also. So tuition fee increase. February 15 is our deadline in the division. Short, no? Konti lang. February 27 sa NCR. And have complete documents to be submitted. You have the list already. And if you don't have, just request the office for that. If you're ready. And I know this time, most schools did not increase their, uh, their, did not increase their tuition fee. 
the parents are requesting for you to lower your tuition fees this time. But we've been telling them, you're spending also. You have your teachers to, to get salary, your employees, the apps and everything. You are also, you are also spending so much. So they thought which an on, which, if it is online, then they don't pay tuition fee. Just this morning, there were two calls already. Uh, second semester for senior high school, they're asking, well, is it that we have to pay for tuition fee? Well, in fact, it's, on, it's only online, they're saying. I don't think they, they realize the importance and the difficulties you are encountering for online, just preparing for the online lesson. So I hope reorient your parents on this matter, that they, they are very important partner in the online uh, learning of our students. Nasa kanila ngayon, bola. They are the teachers at home. So even for the others, for the ethics, the discipline, they have to help us. So there you are. Enrollment. This is one concern that we need to be one. You have your LIS coordinator, school coordinator. You have your registrar. As we said and as we plead before, please assign responsible, passionate registrar, LIS and Techie one to update enrollment every now and then. It's the central office giving a signal to open. So we follow, this is a system-wide thing. So we follow when, the, when it is open, when it will be closed. So once it is open, please encode. Right now, we only have later, you'll see, a small percentage of enrollment. I don't know how, how factual that is, but I think it's big, sorry. It's because you're not able to update your enrollment, enrollment in the L LIS portal. Mark Garcia and Ma'am Dyson, as I said, uh, and with me at times, we used to stay night time just to make a follow-up. Pasensya na kayo kung tinetext ko kayo. Tinatawagan ko kayo sa gabi kapag naka-online kaming tatlo para sa inyong enrollment because we have deadline to submit also. Or that we request of you, we have deadline at the NCR at the central office. If we cannot meet the deadline, then Manila has no data. So, kitang-kita yun sa system. Then, other organizations, the media will pick up the data, will, will just harvest the data from the portal. Ah, ito lang pala ang sigyante ng Maynila. So, we need to have factual data. So, yun ha, yun ang importance nun. Final enrollment, it will be announced also, usually end of the first month of classes. Uh, those who are asking, I might forget, those who are asking, up to when can we accept enrollees? Siguro, um, the least that we can do, in some cases, extreme cases, just be reminded of our guidelines when it comes to attendance of students. 80% attendance supposed to be to promote a learner. So 20% lang yung pwede niyang i-absent. So yun, please compute it from there and then you can consider late enrollees. And finally, since you are private schools, you have a leeway to decide. It's your own discretion to decide. Kayo po yan. Just inform DepEd. That was mentioned by Yusek a while ago. Meron po kayong uh, little freedom to decide because you are keeping your name intact that's your discretion and you are for your because it should not compromise the quality in the service alam namin that you protect your name that you're empowered you know better so doon po ang deped school calendar please submit at least two weeks before class opening or first week of june this time our official close of school year is June, the by June 30. So we will follow that. Though you open earlier or you close earlier, but still in the submission, we follow what is in the calendar. So at least two weeks, two weeks, yan, ha? sorry, before class opening or first week of June. Please submit your school calendar. Up to now, marami pa rin, like, ang hindi nakakas. That's why I was not able to post it on screen 
you will see the schools without uh, school calendar. Wala po, walang nakalagay doon. So, hindi ko na lang pinos. Mahaba siya talaga. I think how many columns? 15 columns. For every supervisor, there are schools. So, makikita niyo doon how many have submitted or endorsed LCP. Those who have received a certificate uh, online or mod module used and all of those. We have to submit them. I mean, update that. NCR is asking for updates every week. And so special order, SO, at least one month before graduation. And uh, you know the requirements already for the high school, na? Uh, recognized schools, PASCO accredited, FAPSA um, accredited by uh, national accrediting bodies recognized by DepEd, you may not seek for special order, but you have to submit your list of graduating students also. Yan. Alam nyo naman na yun eh, dati pa. Then, uh, what else? In the next, if you have some questions later during the question and answer portion. In the next slide, there, our enrollment update. Thank you, SGOD. Thank you, Ms. Daisy and Mark for this. As of November 6, yan lang po ha. Maybe they're enrolled in your school, but they are not enro enrolled officially. How can that be? When they ask for enrollment, Enrollment registration, how can that give if they are not enrolled officially? It's important, very important. Anyway, it's easy for you to encode. Just get your LIS function. This is the main function of your LIS coordinator. Update morning, afternoon, evening. Open our FB group account and then you see the different announcements. That's the challenge. We post you, one of the challenges. We post you or give, gave you last beginning of school year assembly. Be techy, be updated, or keep updated opening our GCs and uh, messages. Because the former means of communications, the telephone, your fax number, your telephone numbers, we cannot reach you there because we understand that you are in your respective homes, your respective online station. So please submit your, your updated contact numbers and in the next slide oh by the way i saw Ron, ronnie pa entering the office don't forget the sf5 to be submitted to school year 2019-2020 to record section second floor katabi lang po namin sila cd or usb may do hard copy of course to be received by them so we need them Exactly, he came in maybe to remind. Thank you. Then the salient facts, it is important thing that you should know. Three, in, this came from the survey we ask of you. Thank you, Doc Sinning, for helping us out, the organizations for helping us out on this survey. 357 displaced teachers and academic NTP. Academic NTP for the others, this is academic non-teaching personnel. They are graduates of education, but they're giving loads or assignment that of a librarian, guidance counselor, what else? But they are educators. They are BSE, BSE ed, or education graduate. But the assignment given, this is more given is on non-academic. Could be registrar, guidance, uh, student discipline coordinator, and all the like. So they are academic NTP. Abbreviation is ANTP, A-N-T-P. May ANT kayo, may ANTP. And uh, sorry to say, out of the 48 who signified intention, yung initially ha, apprehensions, they're closing schools, only seven officially closed operation. Small schools ito. May SPED, one SPED, I think uh, five kinder, one high school there. So we did not include the others. 
you may have your enrollment as good as 25. Pwede na po yun. As we have discussed, when I gave you technical assistance on labor advisories, 37 and 38, tama ba yung number? We, you can do so many things just to down, how do you say, to streamline or rather downsize your, your employees. Or you can have your morning and afternoon session, uh, four hours, four hours, and they can be employed part-time outside. Di ba yun yung naging agreement nun? 146 private school teachers are now employed in Manila Public Schools. Thank you, Ma'am Vanessa, personnel department, for giving us this update. That's our personnel downstairs. 146 private school teachers, Ma'am Aida as well, for facilitating this. And the next slide. There. For the plans. Later na yung question, ha? For the plans... As I've said, this came from our former discussions or survey and meetings like after the beginning of school year assembly. You have the plan of activity, first column, second column, the tentative schedule we, we arrived at, and the assigned committee, meaning of assigned committee, those that are here are the organizations or key persons leading. Siya yung head, siya yung chair. But others may be Members, we can call, let's say, end of school year assembly. That's official function of SDO Manila. That's ours as key persons. But we may get from you as technical working group members. March 11, formerly, usually, four years ago. Mar, uh, February tayo, but this time, uh, it's March 11. Medyo dinilay natin ng konti. Okay ba to? Unless you give me 50% uh, comments saying that we move it to the same February, then this is it, March 11. Please note that all these schedules are falling on a Thursday. Para hindi madaling makalimutan so that you can jot this, plot this in your calendar. You might be having your other, other organization functions or activities outside seminars. Please give way for this. Jot this in your calendar. May 11, 2021, that's Thursday. Unification through election, remember doxining during the time of the former uh, superintendent. This was the agree, agreed that after two years, we shall have unification meeting and an election of Federation of Officers here in Manila. So before that, we shall have unification meeting coming up with by laws that you will you will draw, then it will be presented, it will be posted in our FP group before we have our May 6, 2021 elect first election of Federation of Officers under the guidance of DEPED. The first time that we will be guiding you here. So for those who are interested to be part of the election committee, we'll be getting, of course, the without his permission, pa, Ma'am Aida. <laughs> Please allow me, itik po natin si R.D. Mercado, our president for, for ADEMIS of our super, supervisors group to be the head, the key person for this. And he may get uh, TWG coming from private schools also. Uh, especially for the drafting of the bylaws, which is applicable and agreeable for all small, big, uh, very big organizations. Then beginning of school year assembly, si Boshia, yung isa, Yoshia, ito Boshia. July 8, 2021. And you know the topics there, the agenda there, that you really need most. Naturally, division office takes the lead. District mapping, this is never erased from the list because this is our major, major responsibility of function. We used to do mapping, school mapping, site visit. Though for now, we usually conduct virtual site, on site, uh, site validation when it comes to documents of uh, renewing a permit. For new permit and recognition, then we do really conduct physical on-site visit. Yun lang renewal, yun lang yung may, may virtual. 
Then project plan implementation review for 2021, come planning for 2022, PIR come planning, November 11, 2021. I think it's Thursday also. There. We, we hope to go outside again as we usually do with representatives for the district. Sana F2F na tayo dyan. And this is one that you have been suggesting and this was, I think this was stopped 2013, 14. Noxini, uh, the tribute to private schools educators. Apu Saab has this last year, but we want it to be for the whole uh, private schools. So we shall be having recognition, awarding of performing schools based on some criteria. Again, there will be committees, subcommittees under this to come up with criteria. Then we will discuss, we will call later. Consini and hand. And I hope you are available. Please PM me also your availability to which committee do you want to belong. Paki PM nyo lang ako kung saan nyo gusto na maging uh, technical working group para at least your expertise could be top. Alam ko naman that you'll be helping us. We are one in this. So please, let's, uh, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Seminars, activities, DepEd as usual before. Uh, there are sponsored seminars that you're invited, like Sir Aaron's seminars and activities and contests, like Sir Aaron's uh, Boys and Girls Week, and congratulations to the winners. I hope we, it's our dream. Itaas pa natin yung level, ha? Punta pa tayo sa higher positions, the mayor, vice mayor, the councillors. Your, you lack documents, certificates, uh, trophies, recognitions for the students. Yun ang kailangan. You've been doing this, but they lack, they are not given or they cannot present the documents or certificates. Yun ang nakikita kong kulang nila. Di ba, Ma'am Anchi Modesto? And for the contest, different EPS, Education Program Supervisors, have been inviting you. Math contest, English, Science, TLE, THE, AP, we have them all. It's just for you to, to join. Outside the countries, it's your pick. Kaya na po yan, outside the countries. Journalism, we cannot have it this time because of pandemic, but we will continue, continue that annually as we've been doing before. So, saka na po yung mga journalism natin. So far, I think those are the most important plans unless you have to be included your organization's plans, your schedules, let me let us have them so that we can put in between para hindi tayo nag overlap So kung meron na dito, you may not have any more. Let's have one. Pero kung wala pa, then you can have. Especially this, by district, by, by organizations, by, by friends, by neighbors. So those are the things. And move on to the next slide. Ito po, sharing with you, as the Manila is sharing with you this one. One of the latest, I think, one month ago. Though this is for public schools, you may also learn from this as your reference. Pwede po yan. That is, precautionary guidelines and online meetings. Except for the Google, uh, ABC, all others may apply to you. Private schools. And also, let's remember the advices, the tips given to us by Attorney Estrada when he conducted legal implications of online learning. Very fruitful, very educational. I have the, the presentation, PowerPoint presentation, yet to be uploaded. Nasa akin po yung presentation niya, doon sa hindi naka-attend, i-upload ko na lang po later. Just remind me, ah. puro remind me. Next please is a part page two and uh, the next slide is we're almost ending the next slide is this i used to give you this every time because these are the guidelines and department orders you need at this point in time so yung relevance niya what is department order 88 series 2020 do you still remember ayan po who have seen this, I hope you have seen this. You can download this. The revision, Department Order 
88 Series 20, na ako ng thousand na 2011 revisions. My laptop is malfunctioning, or I, I am malfunctioning. Either either way. So Department Order 88 Series 20, 2011 was the amendment or revisions of that. I hope you have a copy of that. Not just the red manual authored by attorney Olang Sarmiento or the blue manual authored by Yusek Sunga. Pwede rin yan. Oh, I'm not advertising, ha? I'm just telling you that those are more important um, concise, concise guidelines for private schools, applicable for private schools. DO 17, Series 2020, this is your main D, uh, department order of the hour until December 29. Please go over this before, at, as you ask questions, all your ask questions will be answered here. All the questions you asked a while ago to you, set, they are found in the department orders we gave you. They were given to you as TA, especially the, the interim guidelines on, on assessment that you can have your own. You can continue using your school's assessment aligned with your VMGO, Vision, Mission, Goals, and Objective. So, pwede po yung gamitin yun. Except that, you have to inform NCR through the division office. And by now, you memorize already the name of our director, Dr. Malcolm Garma. And our superintendent, you know her so well. Then, immersion, get hold of this memo on immersion, work immersion during pandemic. Yung mga tinatanong nyo, nandito lang po siya. What you have to do, compile this, all this memo, this will help you. Diba, remember I told you, when you are in indecision, in a crisis, look up for God's guidance, look down for references, look within to ask your conscience. So, nandiyan lang po siya. DO 30 Series 2020 Revised Deped Calendar. You're just guided. You may use yours, provided again that you submit one if you have revised, if, if you're not following this guideline. You have submitted already, but if you follow another one or you revise, you revise it after this was, this was released, then still you have to inform NCR through the division office. So yun lang naman. Division office to NCR, NCR to division office. Central office to NCR, NCR to division office. Yun lang po yung takbo. In the division office, from the records stamped, received, to the superintendent's office with the routing going to CID, CID to us, the supervisors, focal persons of preschools, schools, from us back to CID for co signature, and then to our ASDS, Ma'am Sincha Ailes, because she's in overseer of curriculum instruction and instruction, and then again uh, to Ma'am Lim for the signature back to the records. If it is hand carried, then you come for it. Make a follow up after three days, every three days here at the division office. Call up our CID office for follow up. Huwag niyong hintay, ayan, natawagan kayo. Tawagan niyo kayo kami after three days, then another three days to make a follow up. Huwag po isang buwan. When we submit it to, the, to NCR, we inform you also, follow up at the NCR every three days, every three days. Para at least, mas mabilis yun. Huwag niyo nahintayin ng isang buwan, dalawang buwan, kung kailan kailangan ang certificate or certification, doon pa lang natin hahanapin. So, with that, I, I know you've been doing that. Just the same. Uh, senior citizen is reminding you <laughs> to, to, let's follow what we've been practicing. USEC has high regard on Manila people, especially the private schools. Uh, you are leading, so continue leading. We continue leading. Nasa, nasa likuran nyo lang kami. DO 31, Series 2020, ito yung online learning. I have posted in another slide, the previous slide, that one. If you cannot have it there, it's, it's, it's not clear, it's blurred, then you can download this, Department Order 31, Series 2020. Again, where will you get it? May sagot nga, pakisagot nga sa chat box. Where do you search for all this? 
Can they respond using your chat box? Let me see. It's not Ma'am Aida that you're going to call. It's not Ma'am Ophel that you're going to call. Not the supervisors, but there you are. DepEd website. Yan po. Yan. There. So, lahat po. It's easy. Just one click. The word is in you, is with you. The word is, becomes narrower. It's easy. But think before we click. So, DepEd website. Yan lang po siya. For the division office, alam niyo po ba kung saan niyo makikita ang mga ano namin? Meron po tayo, how do you call it? Uh, division website, SDO Manila. Andun po yung mga supervisor na nagagandahan, the management team. Andun doon po sila lahat. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I am responding to Rick Cruz. There is a memo regards the content of MOA for new application for senior high school. Actually, not a memo, but just the same, a checklist that you can get from the office. Not the one that you can search from the internet, from the DepEd website. Ours is localized for NCR, but we do follow the, the guidelines, the central office guideline. But just the same, the divisions have uh, crafted the respective contextualized uh, form, checklist, according to the needs of the division. Kung taga Mindanao yan, iba yung kanilang mga local, local documents ask. So, yun. Uh, Next slide, ending. This was the starting, the starting lines I spoke before acknowledging you. Live by the spirit of faith, serve by the spirit of zeal of Saint Lazar. And so with this, uh, if you have some questions, you may type in your question using the chat box or later we can use our uh, microphone to, to give your, to, for you to ask questions. Okay. Uh, next, AJ, pwedeng paki po paki present yung ano natin. Checklist from NCR. I am sure you have received already the e-certificate and uh, correspondingly the instructions there. Yon. Nagagawin nyo. There are so many certificates you have to come up with that you can do in one sitting. Ito yan. Okay. You're familiar with this, correct? And this was emailed to you directly. So you spoke with the NCR. We are not privy to that, but just the same, we thought, we are informed that this is the content of it. And I was give, we were given a copy, and ito na nga po yun. Yan. For the technical assistance of our we supervisors, ito yung hahanapin sa inyo. Uh, konting taas pa muna. First. Yan. Remember when uh, Atoni Estrada yata yun, took the lead of uh, requesting the Central to, to review department order 31 or 13 regarding the LCP. Ito na yung kinalabas, kinalabasan. So, page 2 of that. Yan. That's the summary of the checklist. The right side and the right side available, yes or no. Pero I would suggest that you put there a touch for easy tracking for easy filing, easy locating, instead of yes, kindly put there attachment one. Let's say certification that the school has teacher professional development training plan and you have it, rather than saying or checking yes, please say attachment one. So it follows for the next one, certification of the existence of an orientation training plan for parents, attachment two. If you're asking about the template, well, your school's template will do. What is important is it's a certification. When it is a certification, it's an official document. You have your logo, 
and everything and the name spelled out of the administrator or uh, authority to sign. May pirma siya doon. Kindly include also your school ID. Diba? School ID. Gamitin natin school ID ha, hindi natin natatandaan. Before you don't, we, we didn't remember our district, di ba? From what district are you? Ano po yung district? <laughs> district 1. This time, memorize nyo na kung anong district nyo, congressional district. Susunod namang ipapasok, schools district. Ilang ba meron tayo? 37, 39 schools district. And then, eto na yun. So, there. No training plan must jive with modality, online distance learning. You have three choices binigay ang DepEd. You have the online, you have the modular, you have the radio broadcast. I thought you'll be asking Yusek about the radio broadcast, um, right? If you could share. Di ba sa, may nagtanong sa inyo doon sa survey eh. Wala kaninang nagtanong kay Yusek, no? So yun. Tatanong, ko, tatanong na lang natin. So below, to further enhance the school LCP, ay nasa na. Yan. The following must be incorporated. Implementation plan and the school's multiple learning delivery modalities with blended learning and distance learning as major options. LCP itself. Again, you're asked us, what's the template? How does it look like? It's your choice. Provided you clearly stipulate all this. Provided all this can be found, readily found there. Because you have your own style, especially if you're PAASCO accredited, you have your style. If you are PAYAC certified, you have your style. If you are Dominican congregation assessed, then you have your style. St. Paul also, RVM also, you have your own. own ISO certified, you have another another template use provided these are the content and you have it identified as your attachment one yung document nyo ha attachment one lalagay nyo din doon malaki right hand corner doon sa inyong document let's say implementation plan attachment one o oh, kung attachment one siya teacher school heads professional development training plan attachment two lalagay nyo doon sa sa document nyo na i-attach ka nito kung soft copy siya nakasulat din doon ha Paka-indicate. Then, orientation training plan for parents. I'm sure you all have this. Na, nabasa na namin eh. Kaya lang, kailangan natin ilagay yung attachment. Ayusin accordingly. Not accordingly in your report, but ac uh, accordingly in this summary. Basta lalagyan nyo lang ng number do sa report. No? Next, required documents for online distance learning. Blended. Schools Omnibus Certificate Compliance. O, di ba may Omnibus Code tayo? May Omnibus, omnibus Certificate Compliance. What do we mean by Omnibus? Pakichat nga. Parang, parang nakalimutan ko na yung aking high school life. Omnibus. Omnibus Policy. That is... Nagtatype. Walang nagtatype. What do we understand by Omnibus Certificate Certificate or omnibus by itself. Wala. Okay, your overall certificate of compliance. And then, sir, next slide. There. Silent reading. Schools learning management system or outsourced online system to support the learning modality. Deba, some of you have been helping each other, neighbor schools, small schools, or oh, let's have one station, one school station for all this. So you can, you, you're together. In other schools, I think RCAM ES, you can uh, in Tondo somewhere. They have one school to be their online center. So the school is vacant. Ang ginagamit nila yung isa lang school. Kasi online naman siya. For online uh, modalities. So nandun yung lahat ng 
computer, etc. And our small schools, ang tawag natin doon, Light of Thinkers, they're doing this. Maliliit lang kasi sila. 70 students or learners, 50. So, sa bahay ng isang principal, yun ang online nila. And they share with the online modalities. And even, they share with teachers, online teachers. They share with their respective learning resource materials. That's how it is. Anyway, no worry. Though we share each other or we give each other, we give tips, still your identity stands out. The identity of the school, your uniqueness stands out. And do yon. Your learners, your uh, stakeholders will root for it. Their loyalty to your school because how you serve them, how you recognize them, and how you care for them, it transfers in their system. So, yun. The, the values you teach or the values you keep, the values you uphold, and the discipline you give our students, they look for that. Itong school na to, they can identify you with that. Itong school na to, dito kasi, itong batang to siguro galing dito sa school na to. Because of how the student carries himself or herself. So, yun yung uniqueness nyo. Kahit maghiraman kayo. Documents required for modular distance learning sa bandang baba, lower. Yan. Yan po. There. I'm sure na una pa kayong bumasa nito eh. Kaya marami na kayong tanong. We just requested you to wait for this meeting para isang ano na lang. Isang discussion. Isang presentation. Yan. Kindly type nga, how many among our schools have PV radio-based instruction? Pakatype nga. How many of our schools, private schools, have PV radio-based instruction? Is Lasal having this or do you have this, Lasal? UST, you're a big school. UST is one of the biggest or the biggest senior high school. FE also and uh, PUP. These are our big schools. Big as in 5,000, 7,000. Ah, none for the LSU. How about for U UST? Our winners for national uh, journalism, NSPC. FEU also. Congratulations to those winners. FEU, please, I need your you typing or responding. Yan. So, while, we, while we're waiting for the responses, let's move on. No more? There. Oh, wala naman pala. Kukunti pala. Kukunti lang. That's, that's the attitude. Kukunti lang pala. You are on a positive thinking. For all we know, certification attachment one could be attachment to the last one. I mean, they can share with the attachment. Kaya nga pinalalagyan natin ng attachment. Certification that may be needing in online could be a certification needed in modular. So, lalagyan nyo lang at see attachment one. It's something like that. Have I missed some points? May na nalimutan ba ako? Ma'am Aida, do you want to add? Is Ma'am Aida still with us? Ma'am Aida? Okay. Uh, we will open the microphone and uh, the video for your Hello. questions. Ayan, ma'am, ma'am. You have, you have some additional information for them? Or uh, anything? Meron, dito, meron ako dito nakita ang ano, question. Ah, oh, yes, ma'am. Please. Regarding yes. yung uh, being uh, the focal person ni, ano, ni Mrs. Mampusti. <laughs> Ikaw na mag-explain ako, Phil. Alam mo ba yun, ma'am? May nagtanong dito eh. As the focal person, how far ang hanggang saan yung ating ano? Uh, saan na ba to? Uh, I, uh, from uh, Ms. Mogsumbol, uh, please explain her duties and how far can we come to her for school concerns and problems. Uh, ah. Pag-identify mo na yung 
Ah, uh, yung napag-usapan natin Ofel na ikaw lang ang makaka Okay. Address Inu- noon, dahil mukhang... hindi na 'yun pwedeng galawin ng ibang PSP. Aho, uh, mukhang ilang ilang pinanggagalingan ng tanong. As far as we are, we are concerned, we we've been giving you TA, but uh, through CID and the private school section, focal person po ako. Then our duty is to cascade and give you the information from DepEd and CR. And from here, we coordinate because we give, we give you and we coordinate with its other here kung anong office ang, nangangailang, ang kailangan nating kunin. Let's say, for example, enrollment updates sa akin dumaan. Then, though, this is the main function of SGOD. So, we get from SGOD the total population. Let's say, for the uh, this, um, teachers from private schools absorbed by DepEd, we request through the personnel. So, taga ano po, taga dala ng impormasyon, taga carry, taga gawa. Now, so far, may identify some services that we give. Actually, inabsorb lang po natin to. Focal person talaga messenger lang siya cascading. But we absorb for DepEd Manila. Uh, thanks, thankful for the generosity of our superintendent for giving us opportunity to serve you. Unang-una po, our main function is permits and recognition, processing, kanyang mga supervisors, focal person also. Second, yung minention ko kanina, tuition fee. Before, last year, two years ago, or many years ago, it was NCR where you directly went and submitted your, your permit or request for tuition fee increase. This time, it has to pass through the division for our for our assessment evaluation. or checking, kung kulang pa, evaluation with a checklist. Then, we forward that to the NCR through you, hand-carried, usually hand-carried, para mabilis. So, tuition fee. SO, through the focal person, private school section, in coordination, interfacing with SGOD and records. Ano kami yung SO, di ba? Ginagawa nyo na yan. Another service. Legal concerns, administrative concerns. Legal concerns yun pong ating legal dito unit. But then, we sit down for conciliation and mediation. So, pag concerns lang po niya eh, about curriculum and instruction, those not administrative in nature, grievances, at kaya na po namin dito sa focal person po yun, sa atin, sa, sa CID. So, yan. What else? Um, ano pa ma, mga ano natin? Uh, okay, so certification. Yung sa may, uh, certification. Uh, yes. Certification. Dito po dumadaan. Certification for for PEA, certification for SEC registration, renaming, etc. Dito po lahat dadaan yan and i-endorse sa NCR. Um, SO, tuition fee. So far, those are the most uh, important things. Lahat ng certification na kailangan nyo dito po dumadaan. One, one, stop one server service stop center yung ganun tama okay. anything uh, if i may add to that uh siguro yung ating uh, you would notice that we came up uh, we uh, feel we uh, fielded a memo regarding the duties of other public schools district supervisors uh who will be dealing with you directly dun sa dun sa mga ilang concerns so we have uh, ma'am uh, ma'am Pusti, who will be the focal person. So that means, siya ang i-recognize ng uh, NCR to deal directly with them, uh, send communications in behalf of the superintendent or in behalf of the Division of City Schools Manila. Now, what will the other PSDSs na naka-assign sa school ninyo? Kasi we have a memo on that. Uh, I think they, uh, they will be helping in following up reports or data needed by Mrs. Mampusti kasi uh, medyo malaki ang number. You are, um, the number of pub private schools is more, yeah, almost twice ng number ng public schools. So, para, uh, and I also added the uh, school na load ni Mrs. Mampusti. That's the reason why we have to uh, distribute also some, uh, distribute the different uh, private schools dun sa ibang public schools district supervisors because it's also a part of their craft. Ngayon, yung binanggit ni Mrs. Mampusti kanina, 
uh, the PSD SS will help them. I will help her in gathering data or informing you or in reminding you with regards to those uh, data needed or no information na kailangan. So, pero yung mga, syempre, yung mga uh, pares nga nung mga grievances, of course, dyan na uh, excellent si Mrs. Mampusti. Uh, she has been doing that for a long time. And uh, uh, hopefully, yung ating mga PSDSs, kapag meron mga minor lang naman na inquiries, they could answer your queries. Now, if you're not satisfied, andyan pa rin naman si Mrs. Mampusti. Pero I, uh, I suggest that you get in touch also with your respective PSDSs uh, especially kung uh, hindi na hindi masyado reachable si Ma Mrs. Mampusti dahil sa dami ninyo, you can address your concerns dun sa PSDSS na naka-assign. And then, kung hindi kaya at their level, aakyat sa amin, and that's the time na i-forward nila sa amin yung inyong mga concerns. Pero siguro madalas dyan, uh, yung PSDS na magkocontact sa inyo, lalo nakikita ko si mga post ni Mrs. Mamposti dyan sa FB page ninyo, laging nagre-remind siya, although maganda rin yung meron kay FB page, kailangan na ganito, urgent na ganito, uh, sana huwag kayo magagalit if ever your uh, assigned PSDS will be calling you up to follow up, kasi hanggang doon na nga lang sa may, uh, FB page si Mrs. Mamposti dahil sa dami nyo nga, hindi na niya maiisa-isa. So, Kanina pinakilala niya sino-sino yung mga yun and uh, since nandiyan naman ang memo, andun yung pangalan ng supervisor. Uh, ang in-expect lang namin kasi yung email email nila uh, o okay, ano, or con yung direct na con yung contact number nila kasi there are times since pandemic ngayon, we could not contact you because we, uh, what's available for us, yung contact number nyo is the school's number. Uh, sana, is it okay with you kung may makuha namin yung mga direct uh, number ninyo kung sakaling may urgent? Email, uh, yung sariling email ninyo or yung uh, sariling contact number ninyo so that we could uh, uh, reach you immediately if there are uh, immediate uh, uh, data needed. Yes, Kasi, ay hirap yung school. Sa mga tinatawagan namin ng mga numbers sa school, Lalo kung madalian na, lahat sila tumatawag sa school, wala naman sumasagot kasi yun ay ano, alam namin na walang pasok sa mga eskwela. If you could just trust us and give us your uh, personal number or cell phone number or email and we'll give that to the PSDS, siguro that would facilitate the gathering of data if ever there will be uh, urgent uh, needs for those uh, data. Yung cell phone number, ma'am. Anyway, ma'am, nasa ano yan? It's in the evaluation later. Ah, thank you. Uh, so, okay. they, uh, uh, plus the, ano, uh, uh, it's uh, Dr. Chofi's, uh, Chofi and Rain who created that for, for them. Okay, okay. So, cell phone and number please, and email address. Email, email add nila. Yung reach, uh, email nila. Aha. Uh -huh. So, for your lang po, thank you. Okay, sige, questions pa. Yung mga tatanong nyo sana kanina kay Yusek. <laughs> Nandito si Yusek, ma'am Aida. Si ma <laughs> you may use the microphone para makita na kayo. And uh, the video pala. Mag-video na kayo. Because we miss you. Matagal na tayo hindi nag-face to face. So, we need to see each other even here. Though, most of you yata, I have had the chance of, of meeting them virtually as a school. Imagine this time, pati sa BOT. Kasama na, BOT member na ako. Ang <laughs> um, IHS and Ma'am Ophi, may I know, may I be enlightened uh, regarding the unification of the associations. Ang oh, okay. concern ko lang dito, are all of you members of any association? Kasi para bang sa background na narinig ko dati, not all of you are members of any association. So, uh, anong pwede natin gawin para naman ma-include din yung mga hindi pa members? Uh, kasi there are also uh, administrators na kapag left out sila dahil hindi sila member ng any association, uh, hindi sila represented kung ano man ang magiging voice nila. Yes, unless, unless, uh, ikalimutan natin yung associations muna and then magiging parang general yung ano natin, uh, general yung uh, gagawin natin association 
not because you're a member of PRISAA or a representative na ARCAM ES or ganito. Uh, ano lang yan? Um, crazy idea lang sa akin yun. Para to give everybody a chance to be uh, an officer or to be member of one association regardless kung member na siya na isa pang association or hindi siya member. Ah, sino yung paki-enlighten mo nga mabuti kung ano yung gusto mangyari din eh? Paki-unmute si Dr. Kota. Si AJ. Dr. Kota. Yan, okay na. Yeah. Ayan, ayan, yeah, good ayan. morning po. Yeah. Yes, I just would like to be enlightened about this um, uh, proposition that there would be a unification of the associations. Because uh, as far as we are concerned, all um, schools in Manila actually are welcome to be part of PAMSA, which actually is originally APSAM, Association of Private Secondary School of Manila, MAPESA, Manila Association of Private Elementary School Associations, and MAPESA, Manila Association of Private Preschool Associations. So these are the three associations. These were the three associations which actually were formed Sobrang tagal na po siya, 1980s pa po. I was not yet in the field of education. Nasa school yes. pa po ako. And it has been there and uh, it was during the time of Dr. Corpus, Corpus. who actually proposed that uh, since you are three associations and you actually are binded together because you have so many activities which you are doing together, why don't you federate yourselves? So what we did po is, uh, nandiyan pa po si Tatay Efren po noon, no? So, what we did po was oh. we went to the set, uh, we had ourselves registered, we had the bylaws, the articles of incorporation. Yeah. And then kaya sinabi po namin during that time, three years ago na po yun, nag-meeting po kami with the, uh, yeah, Ma'am Ofi was there and also um, Dr. Corpus was there. And then it was agreed upon that because this association, the federation, it has been there for three decades, more than. So ito po yung ginawa and then that time I actually remember what Dr. Corpus was saying. Um, Dep Ed Manila actually can guide the association but the private school associations is a matter of the private school. So you have to actually form yeah. yourself and then we guide you. So wala po problema dyan. So we followed naman the guidance of Dr. Corpus and we federated ourselves. And it now became PAMPSA, Federation of Absam Mapesa Mapresa um, Incorporated. No, It's actually a federation of all the private schools. Now, itong anong PAMPSA po kasi, not all schools are our members because po yung ARCAM ES po kasi, hello Father Nolan, ang ARCAM ES po kasi may sarili po silang association which we also do not force them kasi nga po, may sarili po silang guidelines, may sarili po silang patakaran. Sa amin naman po, um, um, since our uh, association has been there for three decades, we just, um, you know, continue the legacy of the, you know, the former people, the people who founded Apsa, Mapesa, Mapesa. It was sobrang matagal na po siya. No? Hindi ko nga po kilala kung sino pong guma. Mas makakaalam po sana pag nandito pa po si Tate Efren. But you know, unfortunately, he, could, he cannot be with us anymore. So, ang gusto na po namin malaman yung sinasabi po rin ni Kation. I can I can fill in. Excuse me po. Andan po si Ma'am Ellen, Ellen Morada. Sila po nagsimula. Ah, okay. Si Ma'am Ellen Morada. Mas, 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 mas na-explain niya kasi siya po yung kasamang noon-noon pa, no? Because yun, it's like this po kasi. Um, if you see po today on our program, there are three associations ang nakalagay po dyan. Prisa Up, which is actually originally a national organization founded by Dr. Laura C. and the group, her group. It was actually, member din po kami noon eh, ng Prisa Up eh. No? And now, it's actually not a Manila-based organization. It is a national-based organization. Of course, meron po silang BP for Luzon, BP for Zipisayas, BP for Mindanao. Yun po ang Prisa Up. But for Manila-based po talaga, ito po yung PAMSA, which is uh, Federation of PAMSA Mapresa Mapresa, plus the ARCAM ES, na ano po siya, Father Nolan, Sir, Father, Hi. kayo po nakakaalam sa ARCAM ES, lahat po ng Catholic schools. Yes po, Father. Dr. Sining, may I add for a while to welcome our dear advisor, Reverend Father Nolan A.K., a friend and advisor of Dabag Manila and CEAP, our kami as a servant leader, I suppose. Yeah, I think, no, I, 
so, so happy to be with you today. I'm so sorry if there were meetings I was not able to attend. No, I'm very sorry about that. I think now it's high time now if we can find time to be together so that we can plan it out. There may there might be new context now in terms of how we can we can make the term interdependence functional. You know? Interdependence. Yeah. I think the key, the key word is interdependence. After all, we only have one common goal, and that is for our young people whom we prepare in the future. So maybe what I am suggesting, <laughs> I am suggesting if if we can have if that. Of course, I do understand there are associations, different associations. If big associations, then we can sit down together with people and discuss matters on how we can interconnect with each other. Yes, I definitely, I always say this. You know, my prayer is not only all of us will survive, but we continue to try. Otherwise, when we are not together, what happens is, uunahin lang yung maliliit after a while tayong mga malalaki, aapek, maaapek ko. And God forbid, we want to, we would not, would not succumb to this when we are together. I think that's the key word today, interdependence. No? So it's yes, not me coming from CAP, from, yes, from our communities. Yes. It's not you Chinese. I'm also Chinese, not you Filipino, and the other one. Let's be together on this because we are all, we are all one in this mission and that is for education. And we belong to one big group, and that is the private education yes. sector. And we should put our efforts together. When we put our efforts together, ah, we are, they should listen to us also. They should listen to us. No, they should. And they, they have to give time for us. So I'm very happy that to see all of you. Forgive me for, for the times that you did not see my presence. So, but I have been working. Now, for example, just a good news that you can also follow maybe. So finally, I, I was able to, to rally and then document everything, ask DepEd's permission. For, for the Catholic schools, we had one learning area now, a harmonized CLE and ESP. Now, maybe that can also be followed by the Christian schools. You go together and come up with one curriculum harmonizing ESP and your CL curriculum, Christian curriculum. So in that, in, that, in that sense, we can only have one learning area instead of having two learning areas, things like that. So, so may this be a venue for interdependence and sharing for us to be able to continue our mission among our young people. Mabuhay ang private education in the national capital. Wait, Father Ha, don't leave yet. Since you're there, we'll take the opportunity. Later, you're going to share with us. We will benchmark from you your best practice and how you're able to survive using this merging of the an, uh, online station. Yeah. So how... oh. I, I have something to share to all of you, huh? And please listen to this. This is coming from the Lord. I would like to share this to all of you on how we can survive in the coming years. No. We have a lot of alumni, isn't it? We have a lot of alumni. Meron kami tagline ngayon, one for all, all for one. If you notice, the best school system in the world are Estonia and then Singapore. These are best school system. And you know, that, that's had been their tagline, one for all, all for one. And you, know, and you know, one time I was praying, Lord, how will we be able to survive in the coming years? Because sorry to say, I hope I'm wrong. I am foreseeing that this kind of situation we have will, will be until 2023 and two more school years. So I'm, I'm now calling all the alumni of all the schools. Support your alma mater. Support your alma mater. Education now is borderless. If it's borderless, then by all means, you ask your alumni to support your respective school so that they send their children to the, the very school that shaped them of who they are today. That's one thing we can have in Rolex in the coming years. No, that's one thing. Second, what I also, regarding the sharing that Ophel was requesting me, what we did, we tried to see our resources and we pulled them together. That is why in many of our schools, we have, we have, we have the same practices. Now, for example, I have closed down the facility of all the schools 
and there is only one school to which I accommodate, for example, teachers who have no place to stay. Because let's face it, yung mga teacher natin kung minsan walang facility for internet connection. So I put them in one place because that's also saving our resources for the coming school year. I think the, the, the goal of the matter is we have to put the resources together and have it in the service of everyone. That is why I also requested my fellow administrators work with me. Anybody who needs your help, any document that we have, then share it. So I think after interdependence, another keyword is sharing. Let's not hide. Now is the, let's, let's, let's throw away to the garbage that word competition. So we are not compete with one another. We are to share with each other because we are our lovers of private education. So looking forward that Maybe, Ophel, you can initiate that we can, the key people for the different associations, we can sit down and then have, have our sharing and then we can, we can plan out on how we can move forward. Because just to give you an update, I guess I'll be having a, a Board of Trustees meeting tomorrow based on our to ha, yung collection rate, collection rate among our, among our parents. Last year po, ang collection rate namin inaabot kami ng 97%. So we have a very good collection rate for the past years. Pero po ngayon first quarter, ang average po ng collection rate is only 38%. So I am projecting I am projecting that in the coming quarter all the more. Because a lot are losing really their job. No? So these are the things that we have to, to respond to. And how can we still keep them how can we still allow them to stay with us even if they're not able to pay? So, so things like that. Because I, I do understand from the point of view of an economist, the economy natin babangon pa lang after seven years. After seven years. But I know God knows what is best for all of us. That is why for all of us, we keep on praying. We don't stop praying. So, to my fellow lovers of private education, let's be together. Let's be together and keep on sharing with one another. And let, us, let all of us become a, a, a force where we can be listened to by our legislators. Legislators so that they will be, we are experts in our field. So they have to listen to us. In, in terms of education, we know better than them. So, so that whenever they craft laws, then it has to be coming from us because we are the ones on the ground and we know what we are doing. So we have to rally together. Thank you and may God bless all of us today. Yes, Father, thank you. There's, there's a reason talaga for you coming in, joining in. Uh, could you take this opportunity to plug your apostolate, diba? your giving the scholarship to public school children? Yes. <laughs> oh. Alam niyo po, baka gusto tumulong. Maraming mga bata sa, maraming mga bata po sa ano ha, sa sa simenteryo. Ngayong taon, nagpa-aral kayo ng mga bata sa simenteryo. Ang dami kami mga 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 bata sa sa mga sa mga areas, no? Sabi ko nga for for all the private schools, ha, do not be afraid to take in students. Do not be afraid to take in students. Tandaan niyo pa di ba nang profit naman po tayo. So maximize it, maximize it. I I started I have been partnering with SM Foundation, Asian Development Bank and many other corporations. And they're very willing. I can, I can, I can share with you what I've been doing. And at the same time, I also, I also told our employees, "Sabi ko hindi pwede na magingi lang tayo. Dapat it has to start from us. The charity always begins at home. So, so please let's help, let's help one another. Anything you can message me on my Facebook, and my number is zero nine two zero nine seven one zero four seven two. So I just give them. I just give yeah, them. Give them huh? So mm -hmm. I, anything I can be of help, and I've instructed all my fellow administrators, state partners, in our system. Anything that you need from them, you're welcome. It's it's now the high time we're in. We have to heighten that word interdependence and sharing. I hope from now on it takes off. It takes off, and it has become a lifestyle for us who are lovers of edu private education. Of course, loving our private private education does not mean that we don't love public education. We take good care of them. So we welcome also students from the public school system. Feeder natin sila, ha? Feeder natin sila. So as early as now, plan it out for next school year so that our, our 
involvement will take off, take off after it has become lull this year brought about by this pandemic. Plan it out. But of course, remember this, you don't start planning, you start first praying. And after praying comes plan. Oh, thank you and God bless. Yes, yes. So uh, we're getting an idea, Father, because they're, they're conceiving on having copyhan sa online, exchanging yeah. pleasantries, informal ba na, what, are, what have you done already? It invents writing sort of and press out some common problems. Papaano po natin, papatuloy sa kanila yan. Naiinvitahin kami o kayo kung sino man ang gusto nilang invite. Sige. So now you have, your, you don't have time. Alam ko nasa ano ko ngayon, nasa planning. And thank okay you. Okay lang. So, anyway, and Father then, Emil is here. <laughs> yeah, Father Emil will be there. So a great man also of the art community yes. as with you, so Father Emil. No? Man of man of mission as well. So maraming salamat po. Ofel, just connect with us, mga Zoom, etc., etc. We have Apa. we have those yes. facilities. We can share to anyone, anyone, Apa. anyone of the schools who would like. That. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you, Father. Uh, let's go back to our MC for the next number. Later, na po yung iba to talk about. We talk about that after the challenge, after my melody. Well, I think we are very much enlightened now guided and reminded with the other updates in the Department of Education. After everything is said and done, we are almost nearing the close of the session. Yet the journey is not over. Here to step the break and to pose a challenge. Let's welcome another young and new assistant schools division superintendent of Manila, Dr. Melody P. Cruz for the words of challenge. So, uh, for Dr. Sini, of course, we're expecting the officers and members of different organizations and associations of private schools in Manila to have their share of responses. To represent them, maybe call in VP for Basic Education Department, Philippine Cultural Colleagues, the President of PAMSA, Dr. Sini Marcos Cotta, for a short response. Well, um, good morning po again, Ma'am Opi. Hello po. And to all my uh, colleagues in the uh, private schools, uh, good morning po. And uh, we're actually um, very thankful for this kind of uh, a gathering because, um, well, private schools, we have uh, started our school year since. And although um, we keep on uh, asking uh, our you know, um, um, supervisors in DepEd, um, si Ma'am Opi po, lagi ko yung ginugulo. Ma'am, anong gagawin namin dito? Anong gagawin namin doon? Kasi ang dami-dami pong namin challenges wherein the parents are asking us. And the one that you mentioned a while ago about our parents asking us na, why is it that the time is short and we're paying like this and like that? <laughs> yung po yun, I asked Ma'am Opi eh, Ma'am, um, can we actually, you know, stick to what we have? But of course, we'll make sure also we also have our academic break, no? So, but, so this kind of meeting is actually very, very, you know, uh, timely because it helps address the concerns that we have. So um, there are a lot of, you know, um, issues that um, concerns that uh, we were able to get enlightened um, a while ago when uh, USEC Dads, you know, um, shared his uh, expertise with us. And then specifically po doon sa assessment, because, uh, you know, in private schools, um, parents keep on asking, oh, nasan yung anak ko? Um, siya ba ay first owners, second owners, third owners? It matters a lot to them. So for us, um, since, you know, there is no formal um, examination because we just do not know um, the, uh, the, the authenticity of that kind of an, of an activity, so we resorted to assessments. But of course, um, there should still be some schemes for that one. That was why we were asking a while ago. But of course, for this one, um, I think um, with DepEd as um, you know uh, as a guide, um, we we think our private schools uh, will be able to hurdle the challenges that actually are posed uh, to us by the circumstances, by the by the time, and by the era. No, and at the same time, I just would like, Ma Poppy, pwede mag-plug po ba? Yes, yes, <laughs> no, no, Dole Camp, just would like to reiterate 
this one. Yesterday, we just had the payout program with Dole by FAPSA, which um, uh, incidentally, uh, FAMSA is a part of. No, So we were able, up to this moment, there have been schools um, whose uh, teachers have been given already the five, one time, 5,000 um, uh, uh, subsidy. No? Amelioration, uh, parang, yeah, parang ano, financial assistance, no? So, uh, for those who really will have difficulty, you know, um, ang kailangan na po ninyo is to register. And then definitely, this is the time that we actually have realized that yes, indeed, private schools are very much a part of the government because they listen to us. And they really actually work for this one. If you were able to watch the FB live yesterday of Dole, no, makikita po ninyo na how FAPSA really worked for this one. And then still now, um, the registration is still ongoing. Um, you can always forward it to uh, to any FAMSA officer, even to me. Kahit na po kasi non-FAMSA uh, members, Ma'am Opi, di ba po? We still mm -hmm. gather them and we still forward them. No? So mm -hmm. no problem for that one. We will be here to help each other as, uh, so that we will be able to help our displaced teachers. And when we say displaced teachers po, sinama po namin ang non-teaching personnel. No, so please po, um, um, if you have any um, problem or any question with that one, you can always, you know, uh, approach us, no, sa, sa PAMSA. And then at the same time po, um, so far po kasi, um, we're also happy that DepEd is listening to us. Ma'am Opi, yung sinasabi po nila na voucher po for LM. <laughs> yung po yatang another thing na sinusu, uh, parang um, um, that uh, Sir Eli Kasilag is trying to work out. I because we do understand, yes po. I kasi forwarded po, that to you, Sek. Yes po. <laughs> kasi po, <laughs> ano, um, kasi nga, with this kind of pandemic situation, um, private schools are really struggling. But we're still here because we know that we are still part of the effort of the endeavor and we do not just want to let go and we do not just want to you know to give up the responsibility that we have been sworn in when we actually you know um, um took the oath that uh, yes we will uh, be part of the nation building no sana po kung ano po yung aming uh, um in, uh, kailangan na tulong mang opi wag po kayo magsama kasi kahit na gabi kinet extra mang opi araw gabi bumaba Remember the pandemic time, your first, uh, the central office called me up because of that. In, wh in what capacity? Or it's the mayor's capacity to say uh, classes yes, because that was about pandemic. Yes, <laughs> yes and, and we do, it's like this. Um, um, we, we also, like Father Nolan was saying a while ago, that it's interdependence. Yes, no, there, there, there might be different associations in the city, but I think, you know, it's in the, uh, the old associations are interdependent. So we actually are sharing our resources. We're sharing also our expertise and our experiences with one another so that we can actually um, hurdle um, this situation and we can come up with better, better measures and, you know, better um, uh, stand and we can accomplish what we have actually um, um, guaranteed. We have promised our children, yung mga parents po natin. So uh, for those ng, yung mga pong um, 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 schemes ng DepEd, which are actually very friendly to the private schools, we thank you for understanding our plight. No, But of course, um, the plight, the, the concerns will not be hinted to those um, every now and then po, manggugulo po kami. But be rest assured po, we are always partners of our, you know, um, DepEd, of our government in molding the future uh, leaders. So again, po, uh, thank you very much po, for involving us in this um, meeting and then for hearing us out. Po. And we hope that our communication will stay as strong as we do have now. So again, po, good morning po, and on behalf of all my um, colleagues in the FAPSA, Federation of Association of Private Schools in Manila, good morning po at maraming maraming po. Salamat sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much po. I go for that okay. interdependence, different different associations. Because different associations have different clientele. Let's say uh, twinklers, they are they cater to kinder only. So something like that. You have your different needs. Retain the identity, but blend together as one community, as one organization. Something like that. Yes, Miss MC. Thank you, Bob Offel. Very well said, Doctor Sinning. Everybody is waiting for this good news about the Cub and Dolly update. Dr. Sitting is the president of FAMSA. 
And once again, we would like to thank the following for spearheading this very fruitful private schools administrators mid school year assembly. This 19th of November, 2020, via Zoom and FB live stream. You stay with us till the end of the program. Well, I think Dr. Melody P. Cruz is now ready for her words of challenge. Dr. Melody. Thank you, Ma'am Sultinko. To our admirable leaders, headed by the Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction of the Department of Education, Honorable Justado M. San Antonio, to our school's division superintendent, Dr. Maria Magdalena Lim, our division chiefs, Ma'am Aida Rondilla from CIB and Sir Virgilio Santos of SGOD, my fellow supervisors of SDO Manila, to the private school leaders, and saving the best for last, definitely, to our beloved district supervisor and focal person for private schools, Ma'am Ophelia Mampusti. Good morning. Allow me to quote Silver Birch, who says that life is always a polarity. If there were no darkness, there would be no light. If there were no trouble, there could never be any peace. If the sun always shone, you would not appreciate it. You have to learn sometimes through conditions that seem a nuisance. One day, you will look back and say, we learned our best lessons, not when the sun was shining, but when the storm was at its greatest, when the thunder roared, the lightning flashed, the clouds obscured the sun, and all seemed dark and hopeless. It is only when the soul is in adversity that some of our greatest possibilities can be realized. We are in this space where we feel that we are so tired, so many things to do and so many things to accomplish. But let us not forget that there is a hidden lesson behind all these adversities. We have a big responsibility of molding and transforming our youth today. The youth today who will be the next generation's leaders. As our former teachers and mentors have generously shared their expertise to us, now it is in our hands as the education leaders of what they will become in the near future. Thank you and keep safe, everyone. That was a challenge well meant. Thank you so much, Dr. Melody Cruz. We are now inviting everyone as Reverend Father Emilio A. Ascania gives the closing prayer and final blessing. Father? Um, before I give the final prayer and the final blessing, first allow me to congratulate all those who are involved in this year's uh, mid-school year assembly. And uh, I like the theme chosen bodies private schools and meets new normal education uh this it is a question we ask ourselves today it is a question that brings us to the right direction it is a question that leads to companionship or partnership in order to accomplish something great we wish to thank the department of education for being a true companion a true partner during this difficult time. There is a lot to accomplish, but with genuine partnership and companionship, with genuine collaboration, as Dr. Cynthia Ailes mentioned, we can accomplish greater things, especially in the field of education. Our collaboration and partnership will serve as means to implement and accomplish the tasks entrusted to us. Maraming salamat po, maraming salamat DepEd. Maraming salamat po Dr. Maria Magdalena Lim, our school's division superintendent, Ma'am Ofi, Ma'am Pusti, and the other uh, officers and staff of DepEd. 
there is a Chinese saying that goes, Ku Tang Nan Ming, you cannot properly clap with just one hand. On our own, we cannot achieve anything. We need the guidance and support of the Department of Education to move forward and achieve our goals. May our collaboration, our partnership be blessed by the Lord. Maraming salamat, Dev Ed, for this year's or mid-school year assembly. Now we go to the final prayer. Let us pray. King of kings and Lord of lords, we wish to thank you for revealing your love to us today in a powerful way. And as we leave this assembly and face our daily concerns and undertakings, may we go in the power of the Holy Spirit. May your grace and love be with us each day. Bless, O Lord, with your unfailing love and cause the work of our hands to prosper. Uphold us in the palm of your hand and see us and see us through each stage of our lives. Bless those who serve, especially the teachers and students entrusted to us. Bless and send your Holy Spirit to all those involved in the deliberation of DepEd's budget this afternoon. We ask all of this to the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love. Amen. So that on this life journey you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Thank you so much for the final blessings. Reverend Father Emilio A. Escanio, LRMS. School Director, Arkham ES Cluster 2 Schools. Finally, we would like to acknowledge again the CEAP, Arkham ES, PAMPSA, and PRISAA, Superintendents, all Supervisors of Deaf Ed Manila, School Administrators, Directors, School Heads. Thank you. This is Elvita M. Sutinko, your host, signing off. To God be the utmost glory. Thank you, Dep Ed Manila. Quality first, where excellence is a lifestyle. Thank you. Thank you to our MC, Ma'am Ineng Sutenko. Of course, thank you again, everybody. I will not mention your names anymore. Baka may malimutan ako. For those who wish to live, you may live in peace and in safety.